Hello and welcome to the next episode, to today's episode of the... Ch- <laughs> next, next time next on take, the Giant next take, Bomb Community no, let's leave it in. Let's leave it in. <laughs> Don't worry, this shit is not going to make it to the podcast anyway, because I'm going to fuck up the recording. <sighs> right, I'm recording it. <laughs> Inside base. So yeah, welcome to today's <laughs> episode of the Giant Bomb Community Podcast. I'm your host. Really, we're not still fresh with our discussion. It's more like tomorrow's episode of the Giant Bomb Community Podcast. All right. What? Welcome to the futurist episode of the Giant Bomb Community Podcast. Welcome to every day. I'm your host. I'm Ghostius from the future, and joining me in the past are Nick's Iron. Hello. What's up? What's in the past, dude? Well, it's interesting back here, you know. Got these physical copies of games not available digitally. It's terrible, I'm telling you. It's a real abomination. You want to play Sweetikin 2? Too fucking bad. It's not happening. <laughs> you want to play Tales of Destiny 2? Well, you better be ready to import. You can't get that shit in the U.S. Wait, Sweetikin? Don't you mean Sweetikin? 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 Well, who knows what that fucking Sweet- shit is? I know, it's a Sweetikin. Sweetikin? Swedish candy. It's not Japanese. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that game. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. 100 bucks yeah. on eBay. Fat Mac, where are you? Where are you in time? Uh, is the year? I'm a time lord, so I'm wherever I want to be. It Which year it is? <laughs> it's time for Clax. It's the year 20XX. Makes sense. Oh man, you're in for a bad That's a really time. Good. Dude. That's a g- really good year. Yeah, that is a good year. What are you talking about? Everything goes to crap. XX sucks. I have yeah. experience. Yeah. All the robot masters like destroy everything all the time. Shh, shh. Stop it, man. Like, we're going to fuck up the time, st- the time stream. Well, they already know. Don't cross the stream. The live stream? Just don't cross it. Sephiroth's going to come back. Don't cross the live stream. Bodyman of the live stream. And Sephiroth Man, the newest in the robot master lineup. <laughs> Sephiroth Man. Uh, Sephiroth Man. His power is really effective against Eris Woman, trust me. <laughs> uh, it's really effective. Uh, 7, by the way. Really? Nice I, I would have from- guessed. I, I, I could I could have sworn he was from like uh, Banjo Kazooie too, but uh, <laughs> good to know. Hey, hashtag it's, Fedora swag. It's the uh, it's the future, and I still haven't seen Man of Steel. Why? I don't have time. Speaking of, I know I didn't have time either, but that didn't happen until after Man of Steel. The uh, history of Europe is here with us today. Yeah, what happens in the past and future of Europe, Atlas? All the things happened. Everything happened. God How damn it. much incest would you say has occurred in the uh, history of the European empires? European empires? Uh, not so much. It tends to be well, the ancient Air- Britain. That's uh, that's quite a bit. <laughs> say. Well, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, all those, all those, well, all those monarchies in the 18th and 19th, early 20th centuries. They were all yeah. intermarried. Um, fun fact: um, the the Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, um, his son um, Alexei, um, famously was a hemophiliac, which is why Rasputin got his, involved in his life. It's widely agreed that the person who introduced hemophilia to the royal families of Europe was actually Queen Victoria. Yeah, hemophilia is a very commonly reproduced uh, condition when you are breeding. With a limited pool of genetics. It had never been seen in any of the noble ho- royal houses of Europe before, but they reckoned that Queen Victoria might have had an... Not cool, Vicky. Thanks, Victoria. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Victoria. Talk but anyway, to the man. But anyway, yes, I'm here. I have a wealth of history facts in my brain. I do have a bit of a case of the Brads this week. Um, the pollen count has Wait, been very what high. happened in 1877? Shit. <laughs> we stumped you. Should happen. Something probably happened. Whatever. Um, well, the Crimean War had ended a while ago, so you have the sort of the general build. That was. I'm not really going to answer this question. Um, Fine, whatever. Yeah, yes, you don't have a bunch of historical. Yeah. Let me yeah. Google that for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheating. And last but not least, Justin Believer, do you believe in time travel? Uh, I guess. This I mean, you have to, like, have, like, fucking well, evidence. Here. All, you, all you really need is a DeLorean and some trash. 
Do you believe in a thing called love? Do you think that love can bloom on the battlefield? Do you believe, do you believe in, in life, life after love? love? <laughs> I do you, you believe <laughs> that two dude bros can love each other very much? I know, Ghost. If We're like Rocky and We're not doing this gold. bit again. We'll <laughs> my dead body. <laughs> you guys just need to. I don't think you own, introduced like, Akbar. Duo, comedy duo, and accept. When I want to. Akbar doesn't need introduction. He's just Akbar. I, I simply am. I exist. Also known as Great the Great, if you want to translate that. Great the Great. It is the Great, Great the Great. A lot of people think it's a Star Wars reference, but I am actually yeah. going Great the Great. First name, uh, greatest. Last name, greatest. Exactly. All, all exactly. of you, greaters. I think, it actually, I think it actually would be Akbar if it didn't have the C in it. As in Allahu Akbar, which means God is great. Yeah. yeah fine, whatever. Spelling, so, yo. So, guys, what do you think about the Quran? <laughs> <laughs> I think I it's really angry. well written, actually. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want to ask me that question. Anyways, I was, literally, I was literally reading about that stuff earlier today. So I don't really go around I'm reading the full Quran. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. huh? I just burn it, guys. I mean, have you read numbers? That shit is deadly. Ugh. Some oh, of the Bible Arabic is pretty boring. I hear the Quran in Arabic is actually really beautifully written uh, compared to the Bible in English, which is the most boring goddamn book I've ever written about. Well, yeah, the, well, the best right. thing about the Bible in English is that it depends like, on the translation. It's so like different, you know, it's like, like it's so oh. a lot of artistic. Uh, what's the word? Uh, well, what, what was uh, the original language of the Bible? Hebrew? <laughs> there are many different languages. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably it depends Greek. on which book you're talking about. It has to be Greek. The translations like, of the Bible Hebrew. like get bastardized and just yeah. dumped down. Yeah. Over a lot of it seems romanticized right because right the uh, it's English guys. Writers. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> English, <laughs> man. Uh, Modern Bible's Bible Bible written in America. That's it. So it says <laughs> what, Shakespeare. America. But yeah. The, the the thing about the Quran is that it's not actually as narrative focused as the Bible. It's and like the Torah. Poetry, really. it, yeah. Well, I, I mean so. that's the thing because like the Bible was kind of made into a narrative. You know, yeah, whereas like, the Quran is actually translating to English. Yeah. The Quran is actually seen as the word of God as dictated by Well, I mean, so is the Bible, depending on your uh, specific choice of belief sect. I guess week, so. religious denomination. I prefer Old Test uh, Old Testament. To a Hebrew Testament. apparently and Aramaic <laughs> are the two uh two the, se- this, the sequel wasn't as good as the original. You're, yeah, listening, old to giant, like, you're listening to the giant theology cast. Yeah. <laughs> Religion, no more games, we're changing it. Yeah, we decided to go on something a little less uh, edgy. And Welcome to the Giant Bomb Physical. Politically Correct cast. I really enjoy those games where we hug people. Yes, we do. Together. Happiness is its own reward. We like to play them co- cooperatively, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, together. Ghost. hey, Ghost, the Lithuanians, right? Yeah, am I right? What? <laughs> <laughs> sort of like uh, oh, I know, right? Those, those <laughs> kooks. They're a bunch of knuckleheads, aren't they? Speaking Screw of time ball. travel, Microsoft went back in the future, so oh, what a fucking disaster the, the new generation was for them, and they changed policies. I don't think so they need to look very the far to see that disaster. Games. That, so yeah, you can... No more DRM on the Xbox One. Yeah. You that can buy is... used games like your Xbox 360. You can but you shouldn't share your games. Immoral. Trust me on that one. Yeah. You can read my article later. Yeah. So the next generation is going to be just like this one, apparently, with that stuff. Is the Ooh. Xbox One now coming out everywhere? Which is kind of no. no, it's not. It, it's, I don't. It will still not I work thought everywhere. they said you. I thought they said you had to register it online once. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. So you still you can't do. work something like that. So, so you still have to have an internet connection to get the damn thing working. That's kind Whatever of that means. That's, so you can you could, like, have, so, uh, like me set it up in Canada and then mail it to Ghost and then you could play it in Poland. Is it set up already? Yeah, I wonder about. <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna be regional, like, isn't it? No, it's region free. I think. No, it's region. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. No, which is good. Ninten- region- Nintendo is Nintendo is the last man yeah, standing. Nintendo, oh, motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, Nintendo. I want to play Super so, Robot Wars, but they fucking ain't letting me. That news about the URM just fucking destroyed me when I heard it. Like, I did not have access to internet for a week. I mean, I did, but, like, I didn't have time to, like, shuffle, in, the, shuffle through the internet. And I, that news was fucking hilarious. Like, yeah, I, my friend told me when we were playing Dota, and I, like, missed, like, three last hits. It was fucking ridiculous. Oh, dude. Oh. That's crazy. I, I was playing I Dota for an hour, and I came back, and then the Twitter exploded about this whole Xbox stuff, and I missed it completely. That was crazy. 
Just what? so now that they've switched, are any of you guys actually going to get one? Or no, nope. I can't. So so this is the this is the thing. <laughs> I am less interested in buying an Xbox One because of this. Yeah, me too. Sandra. <laughs> I I wrote yeah. everything interesting about it. Just shut out the window. So I I wrote a um, a blog post earlier this week, which nobody read for fair reason because it was I counted it was three thousand five hundred words. I was a complete I wrote opposite the first of ghost. Half, to be fair, I was a complete opposite of ghost. I did have time this week to think about this shit. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I just kind of feel like this was the inc- this was an incredibly necessary move for them to just win public opinion back in the face of their complete and utter annihilation by Sony at E3. But at the same time, I can't, I suppose the way I feel about it now is not that I wanted Microsoft's vision of the all digital future. It just strikes me as a huge wasted opportunity. And I was actually, <sighs> I want somebody to come along and do this right. I agree. I'm yeah, a huge supporter of the all digital. Uh, me too. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just don't get why. Just the a... problem is that Microsoft wasn't the one that we needed right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, the problem we is need infrastructure and distribution. Again. Neither of them are yeah, up Batman. to the task of like, what they want to do. Batman full, can make his full own Full digital costume. has to happen, but, like, not in the, f- like, fucking like for blatant, sake, audacious, Canada, like... My, my limit yeah. for monthly download is too... Oppressive, oppressive way, yeah. Like, what? Like, well, I, I, I just I don't get why it can't be, like... He, there's still, like, physical media, but other than that, you can get everything you want online. I mean, that's... I mean, to me, it's, that's what the old digital future really should be, I yeah. guess, is that yeah. I have the option, if I want to well, buy the disc, I want to buy the disc, and then I can go into the store yeah, or yeah, on the online me- market. Physical media will just fade it away be, physical at some media point. Be yeah. 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 I don't think it will. For the game and nothing. Oh, it will, it will in the majority, but, like, you know, it, it'll just... It'll just, you know, degrade into stuff where you just get, like, super big collector editions, and, and that's it. Yeah, well, and there's well, going to be no, stuff like rock think, bands of the future that. and everything that require, like, physical things. Sorry, I think that we like we're really used to the internet. So buying something over the internet for us is perfectly normal. I think, but I, I just have this perception that most people don't want everything off the internet. They like having something physical in their hands. Not only that, you have internet limitations, which at some point, if technology you know grows well, which it seems to be, that'll go away. But you also sure. have. You know, some people just like to go to a store and oh, buy something. I, you know, I don't. If all of your media is, if all of your media is really, you know, over the internet, that's it takes that away. But I think the Xbox One think, wasn't going to be that. It's all had discs, but just well, yeah, more internet. Was, you know, just just Microsoft go in the really worst oppressive way. You know, Microsoft was really hoping that the next generation, yeah, they are. You know, they would pretty much be all digital. Like the discs were just a um, token, right? Just like a basically a physical, easier way to get that downloaded more more than anything. Yeah, else. it's. It's basically a concession that even though you're buying a physical thing, the thing that matters in this purchase is the license, yeah. which is on this disc, yeah. which is the same as what you'd buy if you downloaded it. I guess when I, when I started to sort of codify my thoughts on this issue, I just realized that I was disappointed at the fact that we're going to get two systems that, are, you know, architecturally and in terms of a lot of their systems are so incredibly similar. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. that's, that's a think, good point. And at the same time... I, I just had this this vision of like it wasn't ever going to be Microsoft because Microsoft was never going to have the vision to say let's let's go at a completely different scale to how consoles are sold these days. Like the way I see it is just somebody can come along and market to a system to the people that Microsoft were hoping to get, like and sell five hundred thousand you know units. And I don't know how much you'd sell them for, and how you know you'd probably have to have a less you know strange in architecture behind it but i'm i i basically it's it's so weird that in working all this out i decided that i am ready like i think it would be really interesting future. if they did something like they said that, you know we're going all digital you can still buy discs but they're just a token but all games 30 bucks you know or something like that right like they brought yeah, exactly. the price that over would, in line yeah that's digital. something i that wanted to never see happen. <laughs> I know yeah. that's happened. the thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Never so going down, which is why I was so like adamantly Even against Steam. Like, the yeah, I mean, so well, yeah, but like, you know, the reason why it wasn't Steam like that was releases on consoles, like for most games. The reason sure. why I was so adamantly against Xbox One's policies was because that it wasn't that kind of future. It was just yeah. like another no, layer of fucking DRM on on top of they, already they did, terrible. They DRM didn't offer enough to kind of make us decide. Oh, this is worth it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that greatest. It's also, it's also a. Com- it's also a completely closed system. I'm not sure I trust Microsoft with a completely no. closed no, I, I don't. system where they're the only <laughs> provider of a, of a service. Well, and, and Even if they don't have discs, they're, they'll for sure sell it for 60 bucks just because they want the maximum profits out of that. Yeah, like, even if they yeah. and they'll keep it at 60 bucks until absolutely nobody is buying any more. And yeah. then they'll lower it just a little bit at a time. I, we're talking about a future where by the end of the generation, things that are coming out at the beginning – might be thirty or forty because there's no real, yeah. real, you know, competition. If everything was all digital from Microsoft, you could run to Sony, but if if they hit an all digital future, I, they're going to do the same thing. I mean, I PC games are all digital, that, right? but you, you see them well, not all digital technically, but like you you see them go so cheap that you'd hope to see the same thing on consoles if that happened, right? And I just don't know yeah. if that would be the case because of the restrictions I, placed yeah. on Microsoft Sony, but and that, that would Microsoft, be the ideal. Yeah, Steam has competition. Yeah. If Steam doesn't sell their games for so cheap, people will pirate them. People will go to a store and buy them. People will find ways around Steam uh, pretty easily. Yeah, but Steam. The DR is ahead. not particularly intrusive, and they do have. It is. It is a great portal through which to buy. If if you want to consume a lot of games and play a wide variety and a high number of games at, on a budget, they offer just an absolutely brilliant service to do yeah. that for well, so that's the thing about PC of gaming sorry go ahead no i was, I was done oh, well one thing i want to mention is that pc gaming the interesting thing is that <clears throat> the older the games get the cheaper they are and i mean yeah. without with some exceptions of stuff that's lost but there's still abandonware that usually picks up where that stuff is like sorcerian for example is a really old game it's still i think it's really good but you're not gonna be able to find a copy of sorcerian on like store even on good old games it's not there but you can find it in abandonware so you can still play it but like old games on consoles like playstation 1 rpgs that are obscure old games like that's going to be 100 to 200 to 300 dollars to get a used copy of that because there just yeah. are only so many copies of it in existence and i mean look, look at it this roms you know look at look at it this way bethesda put arena and daggerfall up for free on their website like that that sort of speaks a little bit more to the mm-hmm. mentality you have in terms of old games on the PC platform. Well, it's like the, it's like people. I don't, I don't know why. They're, I mean, it must maybe it's a, maybe it's a Japanese thing versus America thing. But like Japanese a lot of games, Microsoft. they've lost the source code. They never kept the source code. They don't have those games anymore. There's no way they could sell them to you even if they wanted to. And it's like what a terrible ethic to run your industry and in where you just lose the source code for games and no one can ever play them again unless they have the you know the the one of the you know 1500 cartridges that exists in the real world like and they're all going to burn out one day like oh it's awful i don't want anyone's art and work to be lost like that obviously as someone who likes playing games but christ it's happening yeah they don't definitely don't care about the pre- yeah the preservance of games as much as other media does like, i don't know if i don't know other media likes to celebrate like all these old classic movies coming out now but games just like eh, this is we lost. Mu- we, it might but at one point but you need like a guy yeah. who's in, like you would have to need someone like the preservation of film, for example, only really exists because guys like Martin Scorsese have this big boner for them, mm-hmm. and you would have to have the same same thing of a, a similar caliber in video games like I don't know Kojima, or more or even Blaszczynski, like someone like that do the same thing, and that would happen because the industry itself is not going to sustain it. I think it's one of the even, care, care even old care films still they were look even essentially films like new films, right? But old games look like, I guess, simplistic. Maybe the well, because the graphics are like not so but... much with the old films and like newer films. No, yeah. I, know, I know they're you know black and yeah. white, and the film resolution is lower. But like, people still look like people, you know. But like a, a six yeah, exactly. RPG on the Super Nintendo versus like The Last of Us. Not even the Super if, Nintendo. You know, like the Atari stuff. Like used to playing The Last of Us. He ain't gonna sit down and play Final Fantasy VI and be like, yeah, man, look at this beautiful pixel art, you know. Whereas I, I think the better I mean, that's, comparison that's is like teams. old Atari games that just don't. Yeah, even that don't look like anything graphics, comparable. Yeah. To like, but like Tempest Two Thousand barely looks like a game, but like it's still a good game, right? But yeah, Tempest is awesome, but just like these old like like weird like just shape things like they don't even like. like I don't know. I don't know how that. Triangle. Going to play, I can't like, play this shit. I'm like, dude, yeah. game. Like, just like. Yeah, think know. about it for two seconds. Use your imagination. The same people would be like, D&D, I can't just sit there and talk about what's happening. Like, oh. I don't know. My cynicism knows no limits when it comes to people being like uptight about old graphics. Like, ugh, whatever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can understand that. 
So yeah, anything else about the DRM stuff? Like, I just think it's crazy. Like, I mean, it's these good people... for anyone who wants an Xbox, because I don't want them to have to suffer through bullshit they don't want to deal with, but I'm not going to buy one, because yeah. I want to play Japanese games, and guess where they're going to come out? On the PlayStation 4. Yeah. I just, I just, I just wonder what the thought pro- process of like Microsoft XX was when this when they decided that, like they must have seen the number of pre-orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah that nine like, four to six statistic yeah. on Amazon. Yeah, probably. Like yeah. probably well, saw that and said, "Well, shit." That Amazon stuff's still crazy. Or just man. read any of the huge amount. At one point, the exactly Vita was on that topic huge that same success on Amazon. Yeah. I, I think it just comes down to one thing that Microsoft were I think they gambled on either Sony either Sony was gonna have similar if not identical DRM policies or it was gonna be at the same price or more expensive and they whiffed it and they whiffed it on both and they realized that we cannot compete with a, with a system that which is within the hearts and minds argument on the internet and sort of in in certain extent certain extent the wider press and is cheaper. Like yeah, once was, Jimmy that, Fallon like says like, oh, this is the console that plays used games, and you kind of yeah, lost exactly. It. Like they lost. It's just that that's it. They, they lost the PR war, and I oh, think they're trying to come back. And yeah, yeah and I don't think they, they can if they make a subsidized say, model and make it like cheaper. Yeah. And, oh yeah, they can. They can definitely come back and come on top of the generation again. I think that for now, though, I think that this yeah. coming launch, they yeah, hurt themselves not forget too much stuff. already to. One thing the internet does is they don't for, for, they don't forget. Well, things, last so. generation was very much anti Sony, not so much pro Microsoft, and it's it's so different this time around where you actually yeah. in support of Sony. I think it was well, maybe not anti Sony because like Sony well, managed to like nine, like giant enemy crab, all just, that too, right? Just, you know? Yeah, Sony just destroyed themselves. Like oh, yeah, Sony, 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 like, Sony were able PS2, to PS2, which is like a legendary system. Like the PS2 yeah. is incredible, and the PS3 but that's is, like in comparison. I mean, it's still a good system, but in comparison to PS2, it's a joke. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But, but that's exactly the problem. Is I think you know Microsoft believed their own hype in the same way that Sony mm-hmm. believed their own hype after the PS2. Exactly, think, they made the same mistakes. Yeah. Like even the, even like stuff like Don Matrix saying that you know we have a product for those who oh, don't yeah, have the internet like, is the uh, 360. Uh, it's like the same shit with like Sony exit saying, saying that you know it's Don Matrix is really with the term hubris. There was and a quote the same- like like kind of cast for eye like if you buy the system like you're getting everything like you're getting so much like. Like you don't even deserve all this or something, I believe. Like, or over delivering like, on value. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over delivering on value, exactly. Like, it's like, yeah, maybe man. if you want to buy a DVR box and uh, in as well with the console, right? But, <laughs> That's like, the same thing like oh you, you should want to play two, goddamn games. Yeah, exactly. Console, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like the same fucking pattern. It's just a fucking console, you know. It's, yeah. it's not some fucking deity or something. Like calm down. Dude, it's the center of your living room. You'll sit around and worship it in front of the Kinect. <laughs> Yeah. Instead of you know, last generation the Kinect bowed to you. This generation, you bow to Kinect. You know what was the fucking you most? Uh, you know what was the funniest thing about all that DRM hundred eighty they pulled off? What the Xbox one eighty? No, 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 Like the the fact that uh, like hilarious due to real life context. So I I'd say this is a good lead up to what what I was what I was doing last week. So basically, I went to a like summer school, I guess, where the goal was uh, it's a hackathon. We're supposed to form up into six teams randomly and create like six pro- prototypes of one level. And we had like artists, we had writers and designers, which was me, and uh, we had programmers. And like we, the titles we've made. We were supposed to make. We achieved through t- through using the random video game generator. So they were pretty much hilarious. So we got so we like had shit like fi- fiery dragon the quickening. The next Isn't one that a game was on Xbox One. <laughs> the next one was uh, American Plumber Combat. <laughs> Dracula's game of the Blade, year. Dracula's Blade Hop About. Uh, next one was. Uh, oh, next one was. Caesar's N- Nazi feud. <laughs> you sound like Atari game names, like <laughs> Connect, yeah. Connect Metal Uprising, <laughs> and my fuck, and my sequel fucking sequel to that uh, mech oh. game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and exactly. my f- my favorite one, Islamic Cowboy in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and 
for example, like, and the funniest thing of why I'm why I'm leading up to that from uh, the Xbox policy is because uh, the kind of game, the idea was that it's a kind of stealthy, kind of stealthy uh, platform game where you're trying to ev- evade connects that are trying to upload you, upload you to like the the Xbox experience. I was wondering how this would like, And you're trying to buy a PS4. And like literally the day after they've presented their that team presented their ideas, like the the fucking pol- policy changes happened. GG. Like wor- worst moment possible for that. So yeah, so so my project one, which I've posted to the doc. One like you know. Like, so it was a a really cool cool experience in overall because. Uh, it really gives you perspective on a how to work in a team. It b gives you perspective on stuff that you know, like we, us, us writers and designers thought that we will not be useful in a project that's supposed to take four days and just make one, one level prototype. And it turns out, and it turns out that no, because like work piles up. Like there had there had to be a per- like I was in charge of doing like uh, like cont- writing a game design document. Like a friend was in charge of correcting and translating that document, and just the work piles up, etc. And it really gives you a perspective on uh, on uh, how, like, maybe not bad, but how unprepared are some people to create games on like a planning level? Yeah. Because uh, like, how, how do you feel with people on forums who are like, "Oh, fuck it, whatever, man, I could make those assets in like a month if you gave me the time." It's like, no, you yeah, yeah. Like one team, uh, this for example, one team actually had a pretty great idea uh, when it, when it came to uh, American Plumber Combat because they actually created, they actually came up with a pretty cool idea for a combat system uh, in the fighting game, and like they decided in the, during these four days to like make an make an engine from like from like scratch, which you know is awesome. But at the same time, it's not something you do when you have like four days to finish a single level project. It just you know, like I was talking with Nick today, like how I bet like half these half of half of AA games have problems because they just get they just get restarted and reworked and up the wazoo. I imagine it's a it, fucking nightmare. It probably is. It probably well, I mean, is. You, you, like, you hear the stories from like uh, Bioshock Infinite where they remade that game, what, like seven times? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they I mean, just like, completely think about, restarted. Think back to like high school where you're in group projects and how awful it would always go. And then just imagine yeah. that group project is a thousand fucking people and you work at Ubisoft. <laughs> like, yeah. like, nope, no thanks. Nope, nope, indie designer. For, nope, I'm going to work solo for my life. Thanks. No, no, don't want that. <laughs> I thought I thought the biggest team thus far was the one for RE6 with like 600 people or something. I know, like, I know. Like, no, 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 I think Assassin's Creed, like, thousands of people. I think it's Assassin's Creed 3, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. thousands uh-huh. of people just working on a game. It's crazy. Yeah. So it goes, well, even 600, even 600 sounds completely unmanageable. Yeah, it's, it's a little unnecessary. Ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, like, I work with a... I don't think it's unnecessary. I think that's the only way you can make those games. With, I work with a designer of no, design, right? And, like, it's already bad enough working with one other guy. Like, because he already doesn't know how to fucking program websites. So he's, like... Makes images that are weird sizes. And I have to resize them all. Like I can't imagine working with so many fucking people. Oh, that'd be awful. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I don't know if you know, a hundred or something, a hundred or two hundred would be unmanageable. No, if you had like have, you direction, know, I direction, I assume it may be better. Like you say, okay, you just do good that. direction. Yeah, good, good direction, solution. good workers. Um, and you don't need six hundred people to make a triple A no, game. If you're at all. if you're put if you're pushing that many resources into a game, I mean, you need like you know, like what, like maybe like ten programmers and then like three hundred artists because like it's mostly art that takes the time, right? Yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah, wanna, I, just, I don't. I, you know, as a programmer, I don't think we're qualified to kind of talk about this kind of like, stuff. Like, I don't know. It's just stuff. like you know, like the stuff we does was like all visual uh, less program anyway. Ugh. When we were when we were making our title during that jam, we. One of our programmers actually had to leave on Tuesday, and he basically said when we're uh, on the design stage that you know, okay, we're we're making a two D shooter from left to right, and we're making an Unity, and he said, okay, so we're we're gonna have the mechanics working on Tuesday morning. So Tuesday morning came in, and he comes in and says, okay, the mechanics are done, and just bails. Just, I expected him to just like fly on a phoenix somewhere to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> Such an awesome moment. And the just other guy we got this, on and just teleports. Yeah, yeah. Like, or, or drop a smoke bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And the other guy we got was actually also is also pretty awesome because like work, so I, I work. played your game. I'd like to say I appreciate the fact that your main character is female. <laughs> Even though strong. he's a dragon, still. Awesome. Yeah, we have our female dragon is uh, literally a strong female pro- protagonist, yeah. stronger than most men, probably. <laughs> There's a good. Fe- speaking of good female dragons, Drakengard has a good good female <laughs> dragon. Yeah, 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 it does. So yes, that happened, and it was a pretty cool experience. I, mean, I just hope we'll be able to do something like this in the fall, or winter, or s- next spring. I don't know. You and me should like do a, the next like online game jam. Since I'm terrible at art, but I'm good at programming. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, we'll talk about that in the middle of the podcast. So, design podcast. Yeah. Right. How much programming goes into this podcast every week? Not very much, it turns out. <laughs> Not a whole lot. Years. Unless you count virtual dub, which is a little bit of programming in it. I have to so, start my brain before I can speak. Believer. Your mic's a bit low. Mm-hmm. Believer, I want to hear you talk. Tell me about Final uh, Fantasy game. Anything in particular? Game. Tell talk me the me song. About, I talk about Final Fantasy 13 Tell me about a bit. the Shepherd. <laughs> Shepherd. Speak to me about oh, the Repass. No, talk to me I, about I, Final I, Fantasy 13 or, t- or about Nocturne, or about I, Killzone 3. You, uh, I can talk a little bit about... I can talk... Well, okay, Killzone 3. It's Well, it's... I wanted to play a big dumb shooter, and I played a big dumb shooter for about three hours, and I said... That's enough of big dumb shooters. <laughs> and it lasts longer than me. <laughs> I, well, I, was, I, I, I played now. three hours several months ago. Oh, okay. um, it's it's an all right it's an all right game. It's got some cool set pieces and yeah. stuff. It's just at some point I'm like, yep, I've had enough. Uh, yeah, I should I can... get you excited for the next kill zone. I want Shadowfall. You know what? Shadowfall. If that game, if they decided to take the kill zone universe and made it more like a crisis ish. Yeah, well, that. <laughs> I, I would be like, just fine. Crisis, like a big open world. Yeah, that'd be cool. Can hold more than one. That would be fun. I would be um, fine if the if the plot just didn't suck. That, you the crisis. The, the you know, one three ending is just a world. It's kind uh, of weird. Speaking of shooters, I want to play that that new Wolfenstein. That's yeah, me too. I want to play the Rise. Like they're going back. Classic. That classic. Wolfenstein that came out a couple of years ago was kind of weird. Was okay. It was pretty okay. It was okay. It was okay. That had a yeah, cool, interesting like, world, I guess. The most, the most disappointing game out about that last Wolfenstein was that the multiplayer wasn't just enemy territory in HD. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's game. true. The new one has like health and armor, and I guess you can hold more than one, gu- more than two guns or something like that. Um, so it seems like they're making a more classic shooter, which should be fun. Mm. So Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy thirteen is it's a good thing I went into that game knowing that the plot wasn't all that great or didn't explain itself well. I went Man, in to don't, see, I, you don't like hope I, S time is like your favorite character of all time. You know it's a Final Fantasy game and you have a, 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 a depressed angry teen. How do you think you Japanese pronounce Snow's team. last name anyway? Is it like Vier, like French, or is it like Villiers? I think it's Vier, probably. Villiers. Really? Let's call him douchebag. I feel- <laughs> yeah, he is it's stupid like, fucking Jack. And Snow is so douche. fucking bad. Oh, God. He's in 13 2 all yeah. the time. I hate him. Anyway. Um, it's Troy Baker, isn't time. it? Or Liam? Yep, that's like, Troy Baker. Looks yeah. like his last oh, name. Sucks. Speaking of Troy, Troy Baker, Baker. looks like, like, like before what? Infamous he does. Second, Snow looked like Troy Baker. Yeah, he does. As far as I can tell. Yeah, um, but I went to the game looking for some cool looking settings and uh, some interesting combat and. I'm interested. I'm interested in seeing where both of those go. I guess if you're going to the game looking for, you know, a fairly good plot, it's that's not going to sell you. Um, they don't do. It, they don't explain anything. It gets interesting well, they, later on. You gotta read just, those, uh, those documents in the, in the start menu, man. There's like 36 pages of text just. Explain, that's a good way to explain like, a game. Still, I just not have to read see in the God knows what. Well, I mean, I figured out. I've kind of figured out a little bit of what's going on, but it seems like they're really overcomplicating the plot. Oh yeah, they are. It's like they just throw you like halfway through a story of a world, right? And they're like, "Hey, you're in the cocoon. What's the cocoon? Don't worry about it. You'll find it later." Falsy, Halsey, Halsey, Lissy, Cursed Lissy. What does that even mean? I don't. I know. Chocobo. I you know, it is. Like that black guy has a chocobo in his head, so that game's okay, I guess. That is pretty awesome. I like him a lot. He's the best character for sure. Yeah. 
I've played some of this and I've played some of Final Fantasy X. Like the pacing seems a lot similar, but FF10 made uh, it was a lot more clear about what was going on. Yeah. Like at least for the first at least for the first four hours, it's not and it doesn't explain everything, but. It's pretty clear about who the main character is. It's pretty. It's pretty clear that Sin is the antagonist. It's pretty clear that you've get, you've been sent a thousand years into the future. And man, how bad is it when fucking thirteen? Oh. Thirteen is not like that as far as plot goes. Just for the first I like two the combat hours. though. The combat. I like the combat. It has like a certain rhythm to it. It feels almost more like an action game and not a turn-based game. Um. I want to see where that goes. I just hope it expands more and gets more difficult. It does. It does. It definitely does. I think the main antagonist I, I, of Final Fantasy XIII is like cool, like from a badass perspective, storyline wise. I don't know, whatever, right? But he's he's just like it's awesome to fight because he's ridiculous. I, I really want to go back your entire party every time, which is badass. But <laughs> yeah, I want to go back to that game, but I just I don't know. I just. <laughs> It's a bit too late now. Combat? I recommend 13 too, because like, it's just more combat, and it's way better and faster. Well, yeah. 13 was like $9, and I had some GameStop trade credit from giving them used games. So, I just picked up 13 on a whim. Yeah. It's a... I don't know. It's... I like that game, but just... Just some aspects of it really made me kind of angry, but the music is great, and the, the world looks fantastic. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I just yeah. kind of lost the uh, interest as I kept playing. That it. one song everyone knows. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the music seems great. The I wish they'd kept the really Final awesome. Fantasy. I wish they'd kept the Final Fantasy VI chime whenever you finish a battle. Yeah. <laughs> they In don't. Final Fantasy XIV. Whenever you level up, it plays the uh, victory theme from the old Final Fantasy. So it's pretty good. Awesome. Great. They did a good job of that. They also included battle, like a bunch of different battle themes from different Final Fantasies in fourteen that play when you enter battle, which is awesome. Fourteen's great. I recommend you check it out. Is that an open beta? Or... It is not. It isn't closed beta. I am in the beta. Okay. Uh, I've heard good things about that game. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of fun. Um, apparently, it sucked at first. Oh yeah, yeah the old one apparently was awful, but this one is like totally fine, and I like it a lot. So it's like FF eleven. I don't know. I may be FF eleven. People love that game, man. I liked it, but it's kind of lost. I mean, Obviously, really the most appealing thing to me is that you only that you're, you're like one character can be every job. So like you can level up one character to max in every job. You don't have to make like nine characters. You want to play nine classes, like in WoW, right? So I, that's not really kind of appealing to me. Okay, mm, that's sound, that I don't know. I don't like making brand new characters every time I want to do yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. That's want to be like completely different. Yeah, I guess that's part of the thing I like. Twelve. I, I liked about twelve was you can just kick Vaughn right out of the party. Yeah, <laughs> and never use them again. Yeah, international zodiac job system is way better as well because you can make like custom, not custom, but like you make actual classes like samurai. That's what IZJS stands for. Yeah, IZJS, international zodiac job. <laughs> I keep seeing that. And I was like, what does that stand? Hey, it's for? not as bad as Fabula Nova Crystallis, Agito Final Fantasy Thirteen versus e- I mean Fifteen. I mean Lightning Returns. Who God damn knows. <sighs> I wish we so were for rant about the names. The, uh, the producer made a statement a while ago, that, or not a while ago, but like earlier, that uh, Final Fantasy Lightning Returns is, is like somewhat like Dark Souls and something like Majora's Mask. And so I'm like, yes, this sounds great. Jeff's favorite game. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He'd be like, Phoenix Down, those are feathers? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Majora's or Mask. Yes, I is. will admit. I'll erase that to, to Nix, but I will admit that I also didn't make the connection. Well, you know, at least. Come clean. You know, I didn't get that Miles Frower was a Miles Frower. <laughs> so we all have our secret shame. Uh, yeah. I, I, did, I had no idea for a while why dog units in the police are called canine units. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, guys, hang on a second. What? Miles Frower? Miles Frower? Yeah. Miles Frower. Well, That's make you, genius! Are you, <laughs> you joking or seriously? Thank God. No, uh, I've never made this connection <laughs> before. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh God! When I found out, it was like it was like a year ago on the in the bombcast. I was talking about. I was like, holy oh, shit! Holy yeah, shit! Man, or, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, miles per hour. I played all the Sonic games back in the day. Yeah, me just, too. <laughs> dude, <laughs> just no clue. Oh, that's ah. amazing. Well, at least I got the uh, down. I mean, the feathers are in the goddamn game in six, so it's hard to mess out. Yeah, I had no idea. Units. Duh. 
I never played a Final Fantasy game, so I had no idea what they were talking about. Yeah. So why didn't they revive Eris with a Phoenix down? Yeah, I know, right? Why don't they just cast Auto Life on her before Sephiroth kill her? Like, why even bother? She's oh, well, kind of. Yeah, I didn't like her anyway. Whatever. I, I like Tifa. I had no idea that K9 units are called this this way because in Polish they are called K9, which is literally K and nine. Oh yeah! Wow, that's not a good translation. So it's you know, so the pun is lost on me. Anyway, how about Nocturne? We broke Alice's mind. That's <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. This podcast is worth it. I think I need to go work some stuff out, you guys. <laughs> yeah, reevaluate your Make life. Make the connections. It's gotta go fast. Yeah. Everything or is connected, dude. Yeah. Just what like if? the Xbox One. Boom. Not anymore. Yeah, exactly. So Nocturne. Yeah, I'm finally getting close to the end of that. Uh, how how is it? It's still pretty good. It's I've I was just going for most of the game. I've just kind of been going to where I need to go, but I got close to the end of the game, and I thought, you know what? I should turn around and beat this game 100. percent So I did. I went back, and I've been trying to get everything, which has really broken the pacing and over leveled me a bit. Um, so I, I've, it's the game has been dragging for me, which is kind of my fault. Uh, the game setting uh, and combat are that's those two things are still what makes the game for me. Um, it's a really cool setting. I really liked it. Yeah, it's this juxtaposition of normal looking stuff against the structures all the demons in the game have built up, mm-hmm. and those more demon structures are really abstract and weird looking. Especially the obelisk, which is a bunch of cubes and there's glowing particles all over the place. But it's next to train stations and buildings and other stuff. And it's just crazy. Uh, the, the, but the combat has really been dragging. I just... In a game as difficult as Nocturne, if you can just push the auto attack button on almost every fight... <laughs> Uh, and let it go, then you know you've gone, you've leveled too far. But well, you've beaten Dante already, right? Yeah. Yeah, he so you're really pretty much, like, that's like the hardest fight, isn't it? Like, I mean, from what I remember, I had trouble with Lucifer. Dante. Apparently Lucifer is supposed to be really hard, but Beelzebub and Metatron were supposed to be really hard, too, and they weren't. Yeah. They weren't that difficult. The two hardest bosses so far have been Trumpeter and Matador. Trumpeter was hard because... The Heal All spell, uh, I went into the fight with the Heal All spell, which is Medea Rahan. Yep. Uh, but if you do that, he automatically goes and kills the main character. If everybody is <laughs> at full health, oh, he just, got there's today, nothing dude. you can do about it. He kills the main. So you've got to keep this balance between having enough health to survive his turn and not having full health. Uh, and that was that was probably the most difficult fight in the game thus far. Matador isn't actually hard. He's just... The game is mostly a standard, you know, JRPG push attack for every fight up until him, and then the game takes a huge difficulty jump, which is why he seems hard to everybody. He's... Mm-hmm. You have to buff yourself a lot. If people... So, I, I, I thought, this is the thing I really like about Shimago Extensive Games, which is kind of a diversion from Nocturne, but whatever. I mean, not really, because it's relevant to Nocturne, but using the buff spells and debuff spells is so important in Shimago Extensive. And no other game actually like requires you to buff and debuff anyone ever. It's like, oh, slow? Who gives a shit? Haste? Yeah, I guess haste is nice, whatever, right? But uh, in, in uh, Shin Megami Tensei, like, having the, uh, you know, Makakaja or Rakakaja, I don't know, there's so many stupid names for this shit, but, you know, agility buff, dodging, whatever, strength buff, attack damage, defense, they're all so important, and they make the game so much easier. They make when the game... Nocturne, my character was just... All I would do is just learn all the buffing spells. I'll just buff all the time, and my demons would do the damage. I learned all the physical spells. My my demon, like, I stopped putting points into magic a long time ago. But oh. My main character has all the physical spells, uh, and everybody else does buffs and magic. So every boss fight, I just focus and then, you know, punch the boss, and it does upwards of 1,000 or 1,500 damage. Um, but there are so many other ways I could spec my character and go through the game. Uh... And so many other ways you can bring demons in. It's just uh, pretty fun, pretty diverse, and pretty. It has it does it has a lot of depth with only 
a few spells and stuff. I probably just link like, me. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt this, but like, I'm sorry, I first sent this picture <laughs> of a, a woman that looks like Sasuke from Naruto making out with like. <laughs> don't, don't Do mind I want to click on this? Don't mind us, we're just ruining this. Another week here. of visual humor again. Uh, oh, yeah, don't mind yeah, us. Yeah, no, I think oh, we have the okay. podcast image for this week. Oh no! It's not if you die, I guess I'm I want to click it. I was hey guys. trying to find like a picture of a lickitung, and then that showed up on like the Google images like first for lickitung, and then <laughs> because I, like, of course I you have did. to How would you search for lickitung? That will get you some dark places. <laughs> turn safe search off. Anyway, yeah, don't look lickitung. Back to now's turn. turn. Talk about the. Uh... By the way, uh, safe search is always off on Google now. Hey, hey is Justin. It? Yeah, the kids I made to search for porn or something. Hey, ju- Justin, don't click that link. It's a trap. I it's, did. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I've seen worse. I mean, it's not even like. It's kind of bad. Yeah, still, it's Trust really. Dude, that tongue's a lot longer. It is, you can do really a lot more. That. That's why I liked it. How do you guys? I it, so. How do you guys feel about Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne being Shin Megami Tensei Lucifer's Call in Europe? Not not as cool. Uh, as, I guess. Yeah, that's not as cool of a name. I, my European indifference is palpable. <laughs> How's the box art though? I wish they'd come up. I wish they'd come up with a subtitle for SMT4, because calling something uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 every time I want to talk about it is kind of a mouthful. Yeah, it's hard to say, because it's like Shin Megami Japanese. Tensei, not necessarily an English phrasing that's common. It's, hard, it's harsh. Like, Shin Megami Shin Tensei 4. Tensei, like, oh. Say, say it fast four times. Shin Megami Tensei. Shin Megami Tensei. Shin Megami Tensei. Shin Megami Tensei. Shin Megami Tensei, Shin Megami Tensei, Shin Megami Tensei, Shin Megami Tensei. I won. But yeah, Nocturne is an awesome subtitle. It's just too bad that it shares a name with a crappy horror game. <laughs> I just so you're like, I've been playing Nocturne, this awesome yeah. JRPG. And they're like, wait, wasn't that a horror game? Uh, y'all made I, that I mistake. just think that all games should be called True Goddess Reincarnation Persona 4. <laughs> Uh, some people like some people don't really consider Persona games S and T games. I anymore. wouldn't consider Persona games S and T games. At least not past two. As far as fights go, like they obviously share similarities. Like, like the three three is so different from any Shin Megami Tensei game. Like mechanically overall, it's just like like yeah, the spell names are the same. Yeah, buffing is still important, but like it's just a different different game. I'd oh, say sure. the I say the the battle mechanics are very similar. Yeah, except well, you only they're have more similar than Devil Summoner, of... right? And Devil Summoner is technically also an SMT game, which I like a lot. Uh, Ride Hulk Kusanoha versus King Abaddon. Yeah, how do you like some of those long ass names? That's I love I love stupid names. They're so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Never fails to um, blow my mind the potential, the hours of time spent on the internet talking about how names are dumb. You mean like Tactics Ogre? Let us cling together. Yeah, sh- yeah sure. It's a name. name. Well, Tactics Ogre, a Tactic- of lordly caliber. <laughs> Tactics sure. Ogre itself is a—that's a name that roll. It at least to me, it rolls off the tongue pretty yeah, well. Yeah, better than Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we know what that means, so who cares? What Tactics Ogre? <laughs> just every—I don't know. Or True Goddess being- Reincarnation. I'm just being grumpy. None of these games have Mongols in them, so... Have you played the original well, Megami Tensei? Actually. No, I'm pretty sure we've talked about my lack of history with the Shin Megami Tensei games on this podcast. No, um, I said... I was wondering if Nix had played the original Megami Tensei. Original? No, I have not played the original. Way the back on the net. I Soul Hackers. Fine, if no one cares what I think, I'll just... Well, what are you... you just said you don't care about Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> Are you going to get SMT4? Which you should. I don't know if I'd recommend someone who's never played SMT just pick up 4 and go. like. Uh. I picked up Nocturne as my first SMT game. Don't tell me it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, okay, you got me there. That's, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That was rough. Alright. Fat Mac didn't get to talk about the games you played. I think we have a. I think we should move on to Crusader Kings Two talk. Yeah. To my favorite part of the podcast. All right. And I say that without any irony. Someone say iron. 
Yes. Okay. Next irony. <laughs> Alice, what happens in the lands of, Crus- of Crusader Kings 2? Oh, boy. Um, I finally worked out how to properly use Vikings in that game and how to properly go raiding. And god damn, that stuff is so much fun. Like, just the way that they introduce mechanics to simulate, like, these Viking raiders storming across Europe, um, looting, is, is so cool. It's, it's, so, so what they did, basically, is every, every fortification, every place in uh, the world has, like, a fortification. Like, it's a castle that you're besieging, and it has a specific number of um, garrison troops defending it. And normally in the game, if you have more soldiers than them and enough time passes or you instigate a siege, then you like basically take the holding. With the Vikings, you don't even have to take the holding to take money from it. If you just have your dudes hang around in a province, they'll loot it. But at the same time, there are great advantages to actually um, looting in a province which um, and basically burning it to the ground one of which is you get a decent amount of money the other you get a decent amount of piety and the other is that so with the most recent update they added a thing where if you're besieging a, like, a castle or a city and you take it there's a chance that like members of the family of who of the the guy who owns the castle can become your prisoners and then you can sell them for ransom and whatnot or and then people will normally at the end of the war people um from the family just go like they release them it's like part of the terms of the treaty and if you're a viking you can take your captured women from other castles and make them your concubines and they can't say no and you get an increase in piety, uh, no, sorry, prestige for the, literally, this is, this is a prestige modifier in this game, is nubile concubines. Um, well, now you got my attention, what's up? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am not happy about this. What? Somebody's going to have to explain this to the SCK. audience. Oh, never mind. You guys just saw my image change, didn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I said, podcast image. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. Now you now we have to use that image so that people know what the hell we're talking about. Yep. Oh, we Somewhere. will. It's not like that racy. Thank me later. No. <laughs> it's You're talking about, about Shader Kings Two and New Battle Concubines. It was about pieties and prestigious. Yeah, um, I prestige so hard on Call of Duty, bro. <laughs> so hard. Well, pre- prestige in the, in the Crusader Kings 2 is basically just like a currency and a way that you accrue points, which determines how well your dynasty has done, I suppose. And then it goes like the flight flashes around and goes. <laughs> Except it's medieval, so it's like a flute. So basically, Hammer. you play a beautiful melody on the flute. <laughs> so it's like Terminator 2's theme on the flute. That's exactly Ooh, what it's like. Bundle. I just hope All it's right. the... So ding, normally... Ding, ding, ding. Normally in Crusader Kings 2, playing as a vassal to another lord isn't that much fun. But Vikings changes all of that because you can be a vassal to a lord who's off fighting his own wars that like determine the whole kingdom, whereas you can still like get your warriors together and go off and raid Venice. And make a ridiculous amount of money from looting Venice. Also, there's a random chance that if you're looting a province and you actually, they they describe it as like sort of having burnt it or, or you know torched it or whatever, like so thoroughly looted it, you can actually destroy cities, like so they can lose holdings. Like you really do some damage to like economies and such. It has it has a it can I think have a pretty dramatic effect on the game. So that's yeah you know, my 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 big Crusader Kings two thing recently has been trying that stuff out and I don't really like playing the, the Vikings that much just in terms of their political structure because it means that every every legitimate son of a lord um, inherits some of the lord's titles. So you can build this huge powerful kingdom and then it gets torn apart into like civil war and unrest as soon as your leader dies. 
So that that's that side for me isn't a huge amount of fun, but boy oh boy is it fun to loot in that game. <laughs> you inbreed your Vikings. Every game. No, I'm pretty sure the the inbreeding um, mechanic is limited to the Zoroastrians. But as in as oh, in limited. Well, fuck that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Once we that. Why even playing that? Why even playing as the Vikings? I don't even have incest. Wait, wait, because, wait. because beards. Is it limited? That is true. Or is it is it limited as in you can't do it, or is it limited as in you don't get any bonuses? No, it's li- it's limited in that you're you literally are not allowed. The systems do not allow one to marry one sister. That's weird. That's ridiculous. Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Let's just let's just clarify one thing. Why is that weird? What marrying your sister? Why is what weird? To marry. Why is sister? the why it's is it weird because of social constructs that have been constructed over the ages to uh, taboo to incest and uh, well, to well, some sort of low class. Really gross. It's also oh, weird wow. that they've implemented a mechanic like that solely for just one, you know, race. Yeah, one yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I... obviously, uh, Viva Pinata continues to be the king of incest in video games. I don't know, man. I should introduce some of my JRPGs. I don't know. I can. <laughs> I can have a. A uh, horstachio give birth to another horstachio, and then have that horstachio fuck that horstachio like the same day, and then have more horstachios. Like I, I don't said, like you. There's talk- some Japanese visual novels that maybe you should check out. I don't like you talking about horstachio in this way. Like, fine. What would you rather? Like, uh, fudge, the, fudge hog, cinema, uh, fudge hog, cinema monkey. If you do it, if you're doing Quack it, fairy, hog, then you're doing it wrong. Um, no, it, fudge it's hog. Just- it's what do you have against fudge hogs? I want to have yeah. your bigoted anti fudge hog. No. <laughs> yeah, <ass>. fudge hog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it sounds look, like it look, sounds I, like a poor Mike for Kulik. I don't want to hear your fucking anti fudge hog. <laughs> look, I sent, I like, I sent uh, an Maraca email Raccoon. to the. I sent an email to the fudge hog. We talked about this stuff. It's totally cool. Don't we say like, your apology super passive aggressive, and you basically just apologize for him getting offended. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like like like, t- like Gabe. Oh, God. Maybe we should discuss this sometime. Anyway, I left I left a fudge hog on my ex's doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I can't be racist. I have a fudge hog as a friend. <laughs> I have nothing against the fudge hogs per se. I just but... think they are dirty. I, <laughs> I just think they don't whoa, 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 and they don't whoa, keep their whoa. hands to themselves. Obviously. All I'm saying is I wouldn't want I wouldn't want one marrying my daughter. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I just don't. I just like to avoid the fudge hog part of town. Okay. I would prefer if they, if the fudge hogs would leave their opinions to themselves. Why don't you just drink a different water fountain than mine? You have to drink the I, water. Fountain. You know, not really, use the same if, toilets. Yeah. If the fudge hogs really want to complain about segregation again, why don't they just go back to their home country? <laughs> yeah. If they want strong, yeah, why don't they go back to Pinata Island? If they want strong, uh, hot fudge hog characters, they should make their own games. Yeah. Exactly. So to go back They're to his bunch of whiners. Tropes versus fudge hugs. <laughs> <laughs> so to go back to history. Oh, sorry. This is history. We're making it, buddy. In 1877, <laughs> the fudge hogs were first colonized. The fu- uh, Pinata Island was first colonized. The, the fudge hog uh, natives were butchered horribly by Captain Cook and his uh, English hordes. Martin Fudge King. Yeah. All right, back to Atlas. Runs with fudge. Ha- Mahatma Fudgy. Uh, All right. Crazy, crazy hog. Back to Atlas. Yeah, back to you. That's too far. (laughs) Back to the historical Atlas. Um, The reason why the incest mechanic exists uh, (laughs) specifically for the Zoroastrians is just is just due to the history due to the historical nature. It's just due to the fact that in their culture, it was something that happened and was important for the society and maintaining cosmic order. And in every other society in like Europe and the Middle East, it was frowned upon. Also, say. your sister is pretty hot most of the time, right? Am I right, guys? I actually I have a really sister. Like, well, my sister's a lesbian, so it's kind of hard for me to judge. Well, I, I know. Just, you know, they're pretty hot, though. Wait, how do you know? How do you know? What do you mean, how do I know? She fucking told me. I mean, Akbar. I was going to oh. Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, it's the third time she had sex with a woman, I guess. What are you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what, I... This podcast has crossed the line that I don't feel comfortable with anymore. <laughs> Why? What well, are you, you sort of anti-gay? You, know, you guys just... Uh, I... No, just this whole personal thing has just gotten a bit too far. I'm, 
I after the fudge hog stuff, I, I don't think I can do this anymore. Akbar just, just wants to marry your fudge hog sister. I was really surprised. Or he is pretty hot, though, so, uh, Yeah. I was really surprised when I found out that my son's boyfriend was a homosexual. Wait, your son? Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, man. What? This a is bit of, weird. What is this bit, podcast even about anymore? A bit of <laughs> it's a nice podcast. Remember when they used to talk about molesting alligators? Yeah. Yeah, yeah good old days of like two weeks ago. <laughs> Google, Google a bit of Fry and Laurie is what I'm saying. Bring back hanging, I say. Who needs due process? If they're guilty, they're guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Martial law. Yeah. Yeah. It's worked pretty well. Isn't, isn't, isn't martial law like a character in Tekken? Yeah, he is. Martial law. Well, yeah, yeah his, name, his name is both the worst really and the best pun. It's a yeah. really good bad superhero name, martial law. Speaking of martial law, I played Last of Us. <laughs> the last of who? The last of us. us. I the honest, last of I ass. I honestly last thought that was a Tekken revolution. For ass. Like, I thought it was the last of you. I saw yeah. a really good. Tw- I, I saw a really good tweet today, which suggested that the credits um, to that game should just say the list of us. Nice. That's good. <laughs> this podcast is over. <laughs> it should have been over after the whole fudge hog. Yeah, yeah, we yeah now it's over. Yeah. Now, is now we're going to get email from fudge hogs that are pissed off about this. You know? I hate it when you guys talk about fudge hog porn on the podcast. And, and lick so a tongue's wanna... licking or, anime. Or poker. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys know there's an evolution to lick a tongue? What the fuck did that happen? Really? Man. What the fuck happened? Remember when Pokemon still had its integrity preserved in Generation 1? Yeah, those were the days. So what does Lick a Tongue 2 do? Does it lick more? I think Jinx Jinx kind of ruined that. I think (laughs) Jinx kind of ruined the Pokemon integrity. What do you mean? Jinx is totally not an extremely (laughs) racist stereotype. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. She's not wearing blackface or anything. Yeah, she's purple, dude. They changed it. I like that one episode of the cartoon where she was like Santa's helper, <laughs> and she'd like lift heavy things for him and did all the manual. Was there an episode where James had boobs or something? Yeah, of course yeah. he's working slave labor for Santa. Fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, he he and he was like talking to Missy. He was like, maybe when you're older, you'll have some like these. <laughs> Damn, I didn't realize Pokemon was an allegory for like the fucking like. You know, South American, rather not South American, but American South. What? <laughs> That's why they all hey, have to leave home uh, at 10. That's why they never go to school. Whoa. I'm okay. from the American South here. I'm from I'm the not, American yeah. South. Yeah, I don't mean, I'm like, I don't mean the modern day American South. First Fudge Hogs, now Southern Americans. No, all not, not all Southerners, not Southern Americans. That's different. If you play Dota, you already erased against South Americans. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All I'm doing about now is thinking about if Simon Bolivar was from Florida, and that's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Yeah, Dude, I thought the, so. The evolution of Lickitung is named Lickalicky. Yeah, Lickalicky. Oh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Lickalicky. It's not even a tongue anymore. The next His body be just licks everything. everything. It should be pronounced in the most like disgusting voice ever, like Licky Licky. Got it. It's pretty gross. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Lickalicky. Hey uh, girl, so wanna play my licky licky? Yeah, you wanna lick a licky? <laughs> I wanna lick a licky. Your in, in, door. In German, his name is Schlurpleck. <laughs> what? Oh, it's so bad, Schlurpleck. <laughs> what? That, that, that sounds like a Jewish man is angry at me. In Japanese, <laughs> Benno Benno. What? Like, Put him over by the Schlurpleck. That's super racist, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Not a racist, dude. Jews are a race. What? what? Oh, <laughs> they are. <laughs> What's going on, man? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going away. I'm, this is over. I can't do this anymore. This is done. Let's move I'm on from this. The last of us. Let's, let's, let's move on to the ending of We're the podcast. Next week anyway. Don't worry about it. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think we can top this, guys. To, not, not today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my friends. I'm, this is I bad. did this all. This is all my fault. <laughs> yeah, this is your fault. <laughs> Nix's views and, and race does not represent all the views of the podcast. Yeah, I know everybody likes The Last too. of Us. I don't want to talk anymore. 
Let's talk about second evolution. Right. Now let's talk about how the free to play model is completely fucked. Because if you win, you keep playing. If you lose, you don't. So better players get better, and worse players stay bad. Like that's so stupid. Who designed this? Yeah, shit? I mean, we, we were talking about martial law. We set up a perfect Tekken segue. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what the, what the fuck happened with that? I don't know. So speaking of Tekken Revolution, which we didn't actually. Some things were said. Yeah, that whole energy system is kind of fucked up. Because yeah, it's, it's so outdated. Like, on the quick look, like, they perfectly explained it, like, that whole system doesn't really want me to keep playing. Just like, oh, I'm, I'm yeah. done playing then, I guess. What like, hopefully, I think Dead or Alive 5 is coming out with a free-to-play thing that's supposed to be better. Yeah, I'm not sure I just don't, I just think free-to-play fighting games is, like, so fucked up anyway. Like, yeah. The, the game is around all the characters and counterpicking, and like as soon as you say, oh, you can only play so many of the characters, you just completely fuck yourself for balance. You know like, what? If they want to pull, pull like you only play half the heroes, and you'd be like, well, I, I want to counter Wisp, but like, I can't pick Nature's Prophet, so what the fuck am I supposed to do? And not that Nature's so, like, Prophet Wisp, but... Dota 2... Dota 2 is like pretty much free to play, isn't it? And has all it, those it uh, microtransactions. But everything. Didn't they have like um, cosmetic. Just cosmetic microtransactions? Yep. Like have all the characters yeah. available. Let me have tell you, as someone who has spent probably a hundred dollars on Dota 2 items, it's a pretty good way to do it. Oh no! Yeah, Nick said spent a hundred dollars. Yeah. I spent no over over my nine hundred and seventy eight hours played Dota 2. Yeah, I spent about hundred bucks. I, I don't see that it's 900 hours. Keep in mind, I've, yeah, I, 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 I've played Dota for about so, eight years, and I really like it, so why would I want, want to spend money on it? It's like, yeah, I want yeah, I don't, a set. I don't, I don't see a problem with this. I do have a rule yeah, but, I will only buy one set of items per hero, because I just want one set of items per hero. But couldn't a free-to-play fighting game work like that? Yeah, of course. I guess if you had enough cosmetic stuff, like have it different is, hats. Sell you characters. Characters. I sell you think that our life 5 is doing that. I hope they do, that'd be better. Because a fighting game would be something where you couldn't just, you know, balance out, you know, different mechanics. A new death drop set looks fucking Different weapons. If you hide characters behind a paywall, like, you you can't really do anything in terms of, like, one-to-one matchups, etc. Yeah. You you can't prepare for that shit. You can test that shit, so... So, yeah, Tekken Revolution does it the wrong way, for sure. By limiting your match amount of matches and just waiting an hour and stuff, like it's not not worth it. Sure. Because that's what I want to do. I want to play some fighting games. Is wait an hour between matches. Like, oh. yeah. Yes. Yeah, go by Tech and Tag Tournament too. It's basically the same thing, except some little differences. Like, if it was an amazing fighting game, then it would be a different story. But like, also, it's just not like. It's Tekken, so whatever. It's, it's yeah. So it's, it's for some people. And it's Tekken that got released last year. Yeah. Yeah. So why why would you fucking bother? Just such a weird idea. Like, if you told me Soul Calibur that was, like, played like Soul Calibur 2, but had, like, costumes you can customize by buying stuff, I'd be into that. You know, I love Soul Calibur 2. And uh, it's it's a good opportunity for, like, adding shit onto your characters because everyone's already wearing insanely complex armor. So it's perfect for customization, right? Whereas Tekken, like it's, it's, what, you got yeah, like, if that's, that you, was a... Like, there you go. That's, that's the end of it. Like what if you, that was a fighting game where, you know, like, everyone actually had... The same character, only you know, like customized, yeah. etc. And then you could actually pull it off. But I wonder this how many way uh, just... awfully sexist bikini outfits are going to sell for DOA Five free to play. Yeah. So what was that? What's that game, Scarlet Blade, where you yeah. just like literally yep. walk around naked? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's uh. That's a. Yep. Brilliant, brilliant, and yet completely right disgusting idea. idea for most obnoxiously sexist online. And so. Online. You can have, like, a free-to-play fighting game full of female characters that are completely clothed, and you'd pay money to take them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> Do you, if you joke, but, like, you said Dead or Alive 5, Dead, DOA 5 is coming out. I mean, like, there's some male characters in there, sure, but... Oh, whatever. Yeah. Well, I guess you could throw some of those in there, too, if you wanted yeah. to. <laughs> some people like guys. I don't know. I'm not particularly into muscle dudes, but whatever. You're saying you don't want to see what Brad Wong has got going on. No, not so much. Totally like you know, solid snake though. Maybe that'd be alright. I want to see Brad Wong's wand. Not old snake though. This is weird. I'm pretty sure Brad Wong <laughs> is a DOA guy, right? I don't know, dude. Isn't like like isn't like uh, that like that black guy who wore like a weird silver bodysuit in that game? Hey guys, Brad Wang. Oh, is it literally? Oh, never mind. Isn't Ryu Hayabusa in Dead or Alive? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So is, yeah. That can, is that canonical? Like, is it? Yep. Yep. Ninja yep. Gaiden yep. takes place in the Dark yeah. Universe. Yeah. Like, sure. Kasumi and Ayane also. For sure. Yo, 
here's your here's your canon explanation. Ayane shows up Tecmo. in uh, Ninja Gaiden oh. games, doesn't she? Oh. I don't know, dude. Yeah. I'm just I excited. I thought you'd be a big fan of that or alive, uh, Nyx. Why? Because it's got like chicks with no clothes on fighting. Like yes. They go. Those girls are way too old for me. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> No, you want to make a joke about like underage yeah. Japanese girls? DOA is not the game to pick. They all have breasts the size of my head. Like, I like small breasts personally. <laughs> I also don't like underage girls. In case anyone this listening is like wondering, by the way, it's a fucking joke. But um, no, I don't. I don't like DOA. No, no okay. about Only fire. the guilty explains himself. Yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> about so, yeah. Fighting games. Dragon Ball Z Boka Three. That's an okay game. How about JoJo's? Yeah, that was the only All-Star only fighting game I really played. Huh. huh. JGBA ASB is coming out soon. Who's excited for that? Nobody, I know. So who's who here has ever heard of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? I have. I've, I've heard, heard of it. I've heard, I've I've heard, heard of it. Of it. I've, I've never seen anything about it at all. Sell me on JoJo's. Sell me on it. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a extremely long-running manga series with something like nine different storylines, each of which has different characters, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and they're all cool. Uh, tr- I guess you have to trust me on that one, since none of you have read it. But I've read them all. Um, you may know the most common. Uh, yep. Okay. Sure. <laughs> anyway, you may know the most common is uh, Jotaro Kujo, who is in the Stardust Crusaders, which is the, I believe, the third or fifth uh, series of JoJo overall. I think it's the third. I don't really remember, dude. Uh, he's the one who. So you know the JoJo's Bar Adventure fighting game that everyone knows. That's based on Stardust Crusaders. You have like Pet Shop, who's an eagle. You have Iggy, who's a dog. You have Jotaro, who's the, the main character. You have Dio Brando, who's like the you know crazy vampire who summons a who throws down a steamroller and then jumps on top and screams. You know that's that's fancy shit. Re. Yeah, yeah, re. You got it, <laughs> roughly. Yeah, I, I got it. Did I get that timely internet joke? Yeah, that's uh, that's some, some modern shit right there. Yeah, that's a good one, right? Man, Miles Prowler. <laughs> Alice is just going to think about it for the rest of the week. I see, are you joke, but I seriously am. Like my whole no, I, world, I, I understand. Oh, yeah. has been rocked to its core. The Last of Us. <laughs> the Last of Us. Who? Of us. That game is phenomenal. Yeah. It that is. game has probably one of the greatest openings to a game I've ever seen in my entire life. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just did, I don't want to spoil it, but just how integral and like kind of a part of it you are is really awesome. Like, yeah, it could have just been one big cutscene, but it was yeah, it was really cool. I I actually I don't know if you guys do this. I like to show like every once in a while like cool video games to my parents. Like I showed them a bit of a uh, Bioshock Infinite and Bioshock when it came out. I don't know why out of this maybe it's like hey video games are cool. I'm not wasting my time. Whatever. Uh, I think The Last of Us is the first game where they've ever said, "Can we just watch you play for a little more?" Like, honest to God, they asked, like, if I could just keep going. Like, they were actually really into it. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. just uh, the acting the characters. The intro, or... So I was going to watch Day yeah. the game, and then I was like, nope, i got to play this. Yeah, yeah the game um, is... Is there something... Is there something about this game that would m- mean that it couldn't possibly work uh, work correctly as a movie, sh- as a TV show or movie because that was my biggest problem with uncharted because all the, no, all the I mean, parts were i no. mean they could i mean but at the same time like the thing that makes especially that opening so powerful is that you're directly interacting with it yeah. and a lot yeah, of is there something about directly interacting with it that makes it yes a high, yes, yes. A this high could be a shitty, it's game. this could be a shitty tv show because mm. the idea of it isn't really all that original but just the execution you, you say there's any yeah, interaction like, on par with having to pull the trigger to kill the boss at the end of mgs3 also spoilers for mgs3 sorry <laughs> spoilers spoilers i figured we were spoiling final fantasy 7 might as well spoil mgs3 it actually you know what nix it actually does something very hard like that all right awesome. the ending. Uh, i'm excited I uh, yeah. Oh whoa, whoa, it's, whoa, not whoa, spo- whoa. it's not a spoiler. Don't worry. It's not. It's like, just something uh, happens. Like yeah, no shit. It's fucking. Yeah, like a lot uh, of shit. Okay. Like a lot of stuff but, like that happens during well, the game. Well, just the thing is that uh, unlike any like uh, TV show or movie, what this video game does well is because that, the fact that you're interacting with it and that your compatriots can die or mess up due to you messing up or just all that, it makes a lot of the connections with characters feel a lot more personal. Yeah. Simply because you are actually involved in it, as opposed to it just kind of being telegraphed to you. It's also yeah. the fact that. It's also the fact that you know it's not movie like that. It's try the that it tries to ape movies. 
it's movie like that the direction and acting is just a lot better than video games normally do. Yeah, and it's there is a just, bit of film grain at some points. Well, I don't want it to be a movie. That's the thing. You yeah, could take, it's not. Inspiration it's not. From it's, movies, not it's, it's not. It's not. It's just taking okay. pr- production values of acting and direction in in games to a, like a bigger level. Okay. Yeah, uh, the all the cutscenes in that game are in engine, and like one of the cool things is I had a thing earlier where I threw a Molotov cocktail at something, and then it kind of quick cut to a uh, cutscene really fast, and the fire glowing off of the fire the walls from the Molotov cocktail were still happening during the cutscene. You know, it wasn't pre-rendering something else; it was literally continuing in the space that I've, I was I've in. seen that happen. I've seen stuff like that happen in other games. Well, yeah, uh, but I mean, it's just it it, it felt say, good. You maybe it. It actually reflected off the characters, yeah. you know. It, it just looked nice, you know. It didn't feel like I was going into some FMV thing, and it looked like it was an FMV. Shouldn't have cutscenes, but I'm a little bit, uh, you know. Well, well cutscenes cut scenes are fine. I just don't. Well, cutscenes are fine, but if you lose control of your character, like pan around the scene, like it just stop that. It's like, it's never anything like that. Every time there's a cutscene, it's usually just because it's dialogue. Every time there's an yeah, action yeah, taking right. place. But you can do that while involved. you still look and walk around. I know that people make it. No, that's still like, happening. In Half Life, they have those like interactive cutscenes, but like you're ducking under yeah. the desk the whole time or some stupid shit. But like whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Still better than cutting away from the player. Because... What I'm what I'm concerned about is games just becoming this, you know, movie like experience where you just move. Where you just it's run. Not, I don't, it's the games really aren't going to do this, but you're just running along a super linear corridor, shooting some dudes in a cutscene, and then you're shooting some dudes in a cutscene. That's fine. That can make for a that can make for a fun game, but it can't make for anything. In- incredibly interesting. Well, you can't make for something, something as memorable. It can, well, like you, you are ex- like what? But you know what else can you have instead of gameplay plot? Gameplay plot. Okay. I mean, you the have thing, game, oh, there, you have game well, there's is better. Like there's forgetting about game whether the game plays good or not. <clears throat> there's, I mean, there's something like Mass Effect Two. I mean, Mass Effect, not Mass Effect Two, but Mass Effect in general, which lets you. It's not always that well written, but it lets you interact. You know, with the story at least some and i think that that's one thing that games can do that a movie or a tv show just plain can't oh, um it, it, and it's it, not just i'm not just talking about that i'm not saying you can't have okay. a completely linear non-changing story i'm just games aren't always played these days for their mechanics and gameplay and it's fine to play one for story and it's fine to play one you know for the cutscenes and settings and stuff, but the one thing that makes games different from everything else, the interactive part, doesn't always seem to be the one that's yeah okay. on all yeah. the time. Yeah. I can say yeah. that you know, cinema that, stuff. That I can it's, it's, say a, that... it's about a it's about a balance, and I think that yeah. balance is but... one of the one of one of the things that I think holds Last of Us back from, right. from what I've played. I'm, I'm thinking I might be about halfway through. I don't agree. It, I it's don't it's agree. what holds me back from thinking. I just that want it's, to make. I just want yeah, to make clear that I haven't played The Last of Us, so that's yeah, not a judgment on the way. game. That's just talking yeah. about, you know... No, well, you actually, you actually quite well articulating a lot of how I felt about... Uh, about when in response to Stefan... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Atlas? Sorry. Eh, whatever. Uh, the, thing, the thing is that, like, Last of Us is the one game I've ever played where the gameplay isn't fun, but I don't want it to be fun. I don't understand. Yeah, does it have, does the gameplay like, have some I don't. I don't understand what you mean by it's not being fun. Like it's satisfying, then it's fun. It's, it's really satisfying, awkward. but it's not. Does fun. it? Is what it's I satisfaction is synonymous with fun and most well, times. Like, really play Max Payne Three is like good. Like no, not really. It's not okay. that satisfying, and it's kind of clunky. And it's not really I like fun. The, no. the, explore, the exploration isn't that fun. It's about I, as clunky. You know what? The Last of Us is about as clunky as Dark Souls, which is not. Except not because it it, exactly it's not it's not it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not based on animation priority. What does what does the gameplay it it's itself. what does the gameplay itself bring to the the overall you know the tension game? Yeah, does it does it do something to reinforce you know the brutality and the narrative? Yes, you, it, does. Yeah. it does. I've got, okay, so I've got a question for you. Would you play a game that is only the combat and the gameplay from Last of Us with no story? Hell no. No, I wouldn't enjoy now, it as much. Would you play a game that is entirely the combat and no story from Dark Souls? And the answer is, of course, yes. If you like Dark Souls, that's pretty much that's pretty much what Dark Souls is. But Dark yeah, Souls exactly. isn't in this conversation. But what about the thing? Just well, I mean, you just brought it up, which is why it's in this conversation. In in playing in playing Last of Us, the two comparisons that came to my mind, kind of in a way, maybe some of the like the old Silent Hill games, but at the same time. I I kind of got this is this is weird I know but it, I kind of got a Red Dead feel from the combat, and you can accept I can feel the gunplay. You can you can accept 
I will defend Red Dead Redemption incredibly, you know, you know, fervently. I, I will not say that it has world class third person shooting. You don't yeah. expect. Well, you're you don't shooting need, underwater. You don't expect or need world class for um, third person shooting in an open world game because there's so much other stuff going on. I just, I, I want to, I want to make it absolutely clear that I think The Last of Us is an excellent game. I think it's yeah. incredibly well made. I think some of the details in it are absolutely brilliant. I think it's attempting stuff that I've never, I've some you rarely even see try, let alone executed as effectively. Mm. But I, pl- I play it from a very academic perspective. I play it and my brain is thinking about systems. I, I'm not, I'm not as, as absorbed in the world and the plot as I want to be. And, oh. that's, and that's so frustrating. But I okay, want, to, your problem. I want I, to love this game. I am like you, but I am engrossed in the story. Whenever I'm in combat or whenever I'm in like a scenario like that, I am thinking about the systems of thinking like, oh, God, do I have enough supplies to make a med kit? Oh, God, like, what if I run out of ammo? Am I going to miss this shot? I can't miss the shot because if I don't, he's going to rip my, thr- my freaking throat out. And I love that this game is like this. The game isn't necessarily fun. It's incredibly tense. And the way the combat is set up where it's not really, it doesn't feel fun. But when you pull it off, it feels amazing. There's this that amazing satisfaction to it the guns are swimmy you like your melee weapons break really fast and you can't take a lot of hits and that's because it's super realistic in that way you are you're not a trained military man you're not good with guns you know you're not gonna be able to take like six bullets to the face of course you're gonna be able to take a buckshot to the chest but it's a video game but but at the same time at the same time you have also they you know they do also make it clear that this guy has been through a lot and he is a survivor but i do like he's not a trained dude like he he's he's, not yeah he, his yeah. strength is not his strength is uh, Joel's strength does not lie in his ability to is in his technical ability to kill it's his actual ability to kill like that dude does not flinch yeah exactly he, he kills mother, he ices motherfuckers with no remorse this is what I, this is what makes him like a, str- will, a, a, a dangerous adversary yeah i, I have something to kind of bring up against the whole like survival aspect of this game um, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a section with, I'll say, a bear trap. Okay. You mean a Tomb Raider-like and... conundrum? <laughs> no. Just, okay. there's a section in there where you're, you know, something happens, and then you have infinite ammo, and then it kind of turns into an action game for some reason. Oh, God. Yeah, that, there's another that breaks it for me. On. That's, that's, that's like one a of the concession. What if you yep. get there, you have almost but no... the problem with that is this isn't Uncharted, and now it just wants you to... You know what? I'm just going to say it. Uh, th- the thing was that that the game before that moment happened actually gave me uh, like a lot of ammo. Like I think I had twenty bullets for the revolver. But well, even then, you say, "What happens if you get there with no ammo?" Well, then you die. You know what? You die. Sorry. That's uh, if you get caught in a bear trap with no ammo, you fucking die. And so it's you know. restart. Like, but the section <laughs> it has, it's one of those sections, those action sections where just. There are a ton of enemies coming at you. Well, that yeah. And if you had no bullets, then you Yeah, but you know, like, the thing is, the, I, I also, I'm also not, not a fan of that moment, but A, the game, but the, but the game actually does a pretty okay job to, like, uh, to, 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 cheat, uh, to cheat and mask it. Because, for example, yeah. Ellie actually will throw you ammo. But that broke for me because I had no ammo, and then I just had ammo magically. So I was like, okay. Oh, the game's oh, okay. I guess the second yeah, broken like, for me. Zombies. Like, I thought it was all about like very few enemies, very like sparse encounters. Where no, that's that like, problem. Because this no, game, I guess there are uh, some things the, that maybe this will happen. Like it's it's but, worth. But no, what? It's, it's, but what? It's absolutely worth. Tons mentioning. of enemies will come, and you'll get infinite ammo. No, just. There, there's, there's actually a, there's, there's actually a second. There's two. There are two times, and you know. But yeah, but it takes like three seconds. The the second time it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, it makes a whole lot more sense. But um, yeah, I love uh, the game. That's that just one section that happened recently. That I was like, yeah. oh, I guess it's Trust still me, a video uh, game. Then. <laughs> if if you got a little further, if you're further than of course that it's section, a video game. <laughs> the, yeah, but the it just it just sets up a hurts. tone, uh, a serious tone, and has. You're trying to make a movie. Ammo. I, I'm just gonna say the the, the it, moments it, after it, your what you're talking about uh, are going to be the exact opposite of that. I hope so, because uh, the kind of moments right after that are kind of the most tense moments. I just hate that. Like you're trying to set a tone and have little ammo, and then it just turns yeah. on action. But, you know what I'm talking about, Ghost? What that comes kind of right after he's going through? Yep. Yeah, it's. I, I think kinda... I know. Because I love the game like a whole lot, and then, like there's a section in the sewers where you just kind of have to be really stealthy, and like that was really tense and scary, and then 
just for it to turn into an action game now all of a sudden. But it, it, does. It, but it literally changes for like 30 seconds and a minute in total during the entire game. Sure. Yeah. There's no, there there's no, not a single moment where you actually are in a situation where you can just grab a gun and just gun down people. Well, I mean, no. you kind of can if you're good at it. If you're yeah, but you know, like, up. but in the hard, I, I, I don't. On, there's don't. no way you can get enough uh, ammo on hard and survivor to do it. Like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm I, I, I playing on hard, and I totally got through a room of infected just by blowing everybody's brains out. I, 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 I did that, but it was I had to. I had no other me option. Me too. Yeah. That was my thing. And then by the end of that, I had no ammo, no melee weapons. I was completely defensive. Exactly. Yeah, from the quick look, it seemed like you could probably kill everything if you were resourceful and intelligent about how you used things, like bricks you, and melee thing, and all that thing, stuff. that sucks about this game is that you kind of have to kill everyone and everything most of the time. Yeah, there are, there are a couple of sections where I felt like I could actually effectively sneak past. But the real problem is that if you sneak past guys and then you set another guy off, you're, there's like a, a like a cone, like an an area of effect where everybody, when shit goes yeah, bad, shit goes real bad. Yeah, you, that's what I love about the combat in this game is that when you fuck up, you fuck up. Like everyone just knows where you are. They all start rushing at you, and you just get this. Oh god! Oh god! Oh you god! Have to improvise have you gone to way? like yeah. like I love that. Like if you run out of ammo, they just say, "Oh, he's out of ammo!" Like and they start yeah. piling up on you. That's really awesome. But, you, but still, you can actually hold them up with guns, even if you don't have ammo. Yeah, you can bluff them. It's really cool. I haven't done that yet, but you can. I, cool. I, feel, I feel like I was kind of sold this game on the idea that you know combat situations would be you know have a much greater weight to them, and would be, they do they do obviously have a weight to them. It would be disingenuous to say that they don't. But this is still a game where you shoot tons and tons of dudes and that kind of in a way oh. seems am antithetical to their message it's also a game where you walk into an area and not only do you see chest high walls and know that yeah i'm in a entering a combat zone but now you see bricks and bottles and know that you're yeah, in I, I will agree zone. that there's some I, I think some of the level design in that game is poor well you're always going actually to there's a section <laughs> there's actually a very long section for in the game where you see all like chest high walls and shit, and just nothing happens. You're well, no, no combat happens during that entire level. That at some point, well. you're going to be able to always tell, especially if you've played games as not much really, as not. Like and the game actually as long plays as around with these moments. Like, yeah, there are said, some there's... sections like early on. There's like an enemy all of a sudden. Like, oh crap. Well, you yeah, might play around with it, but you can always look. You can always be suspicious of certain areas. Not really. Not <laughs> like, really. There's, a, there's a section like. It was. I, I thought it was an exploration section, and then all of a sudden, it turned to an action scene. Like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, it's pretty uh, crazy. And on, mm -hmm. on the other way around, there, there, but there, yeah, there I, are I agree. Chest hall, you... I, I agree with the chest high wall thing. Like, yeah, there are certain sections with just chest high walls. Like, okay, it it it's this an gears issue. Of war now. Yeah, it's an issue yeah. with modern games. It was one of my biggest problems with Mass Effect Two. Like, it just yeah. Oh, it's yeah, not yeah. really. It's 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 rarely like that because you're mostly you you already have enemies. Most most of the time, when you're put in that arena, like it's yeah. not like, oh, so there are chest high walls. So in a five seconds, like a script is going to pop up. No, it's and like the, you, you already hear that. those guys. And the also the the other good thing about this is that as opposed to stuff like Mass Effect Two or, or any other games that are like narrative but they're kind of combat focused at the same time, where you know where you shoot a bunch of guys and you talk for like ten minutes and you shoot a bunch of guys and you talk for ten minutes. Like in Last of Us, like your exploration moments in between can go for like two hours to sometimes thirty minutes to an hour, sometimes yeah, just ten which, minutes, which is, which is too long. I think I think this game has. Pace. Oh no, I love no, that. No, no, I, I, do, that. I completely don't agree. I, I, I think I've, that is the, my favorite part of that game is just going through these old abandoned houses and like digging through like their drawers and everything, yep. and then reading their notes. It's fantastic. Yeah, yep. the, the the notes are fine, and like yeah, like you can. There, there is stuff to find, but at the same, I just, I never got a sense that it was. It's obviously useful to explore in terms of you know, doing things like upgrading weapons, but I just never thought it was particularly fun. Oh, just, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I also, I also, I, I agree with Akbar. Yeah, me too. Like best moments of the game. Just the the environment just looks so beautiful, and like the whole contrast between the whole dire situation and seeing nature kind of over overtake the planet, and yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, and then the frame rate is shit. The, the frame rate only... is actually pretty good. Like there are two, mostly when water comes to play, the, f the frame yeah. rate can get a little bad. The swimming but... sections aren't. Yeah, really so like like oh god, the swimming like... sections are so bad. I wouldn't say the, so bad, they, but they feel annoying. 
they feel so awkward. I hate the way they. But once off. again, they take about two minutes to complete, and there are maybe three in the entire game. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it excuses it. Like just because oh yeah, yeah sure, it's just it's just it's such, no, a, yeah. it's such a minor issue compared yeah. to the less rest of the game yeah. that you know. It's a minor issue it's that builds up on, t- on on top of a pile of other minor issues that stop me from really loving this game as much as I want to. Oh, I Which mean, to be fair, you did say Oblivion is like your favorite game of all time, so it's tough to yeah. really go, oh, you want to talk about minor issues piling up to make a bit of a problem. Yeah. You, you, you excuse Fallout 3. So I like yeah. to be Oblivion, but like, shit, man. Uh, I, 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 I absolutely yeah. refuse to play the comparison game here. I'm not going to compare it to Oblivion. I'm just the comparison like, between nope, you're, you're right that small problems do add up, but you know. yeah, it just sounds weird. I don't think it's a small problem. There's a fundamental issue. I think that the gameplay sounds like it's just not very fun, and the rest I, of it sounds amazing, right? And so I'm a real uh, like the gameplay can be fun. Don't the gameplay is interesting fun. for sure. Well, it can be fun. Yeah, the, the gameplay it's not fun. Can be it's fun. it's it tense. Mean, Once again, I don't agree. It's fun. Like the sense of I, accomplishment and I like think the accomplishment like tension you get is awesome. That's why I like it. I like the tension. I like how I really feel like I can fuck up really bad. Yeah, the anime AI is just pretty good. I had fun. Do you think the, you think the gameplay in Max Payne Three was good, for example? Hmm? Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, it was all right. It was well, terrible, but I, I am so it awful. I was awful. Yeah, I, I, I so. still enjoy slowing down time and just jumping over things. So. Max Payne Three is fun. There was if you don't like uh, Max Payne Three, you don't like fun. There wasn't yeah. enough of that slowing down <laughs> right. time thing in Max Payne Three. There was. Yeah, but it wasn't. The, games, the game itself was, you know, fine. It was okay. Really I guess. Fun. There was. Like, the you want to play a fun shooting game? The only reason why people didn't like MP3 was because they tried to play a game like a, your typical two-person shooter that's cover-based, and that game is actually does everything to force you out of cover because every bullet is no, rendered. It, not really. I'd argue against it. Does. No, there's it tons does. of cover. I, I, like, I, I played a game of third person shooter because if you came out of co- if you came out of the cover then you just died. Like No you don't. No you no, don't you because can, that game I, I did, actually raises every bullet. And uh, I did fine on hard, but I just didn't think it was mm-hmm. good. I like I the game, but I just don't think the gameplay is that good. You guys are just bad bad games. Well yeah, I, I just like games that are based around gameplay. You know you wonder why I like Demon Souls and Dark Souls because all the game is is gameplay and it's excellent. Uh, it's but, like, but it's also not hard. It's no, not, it's, it's not. not hard. A, it's not an accomplishment to be good at Dark Souls because I, the only thing that game requires is patience. I argue it's not. Which I have it's none of. Good at uh, at last season. either. Which is probably why I end up with like a huge body count every time I play Last of Us. Yeah. Anyway, I just gotta say that my favorite part of The Last of Us was finding a, a bunch of scissors. <laughs> For me, it's been alcohol. Alcohol's been the hard one for me. Dude, scissors are, like, fucking tough. Like, No, I get scissors all the time, but I never get alcohol. Like, I and like, like... I, I'm always full of scissors, and I'm always full of uh, wraps. But I never find alcohol or rags. Seriously, like, I had I had a pretty okay number of alcohol, but, like, scissors are a bitch. Like, I could... I, I made maybe four... I made three nail bombs throughout the entire game. Oh, I... I don't know. I maybe I just never really use the scissors as much. So I only made one melee upgrade. Oh, I, I've I've done it once or twice just because, like I I, I kind of enjoy taping scissors to the side of a metal pipe <laughs> and then like, stabbing a dude in the back of the head with it. It's very useful. It's very useful, and at it's the same time, fun. I just. Well, did you get the upgrade that brings it up the the uh, insta kill up to five hits? Hmm. Yeah, like, I mean, after that, it was like, why never not do this? Because then I get, like, more or less an extra, like, I get ten good hits with this thing. There's a Five reason why not to, kills. because, A, you can't ice uh, a clicker without a, a shiv, and you can't no, open no, you shiv can kill doors. A clicker, you can kill a clicker with a, uh, a special melee weapon. Yeah, but I try. There, there are at least a few portions where, like, you should avoid really trying to like piss off clickers. Well, I always yeah. try to avoid. I always avoid clickers. Yeah. I don't want to deal with clickers. Besides, but, like, uh, and those you, things you, are horrifying. Besides, you can't open. Yeah. you can't open shift doors, and shift doors are actually are actually oh, I also, massively I also, useful. I also I have the upgrade yeah, that have too. shivs have two uses. So just by having uh, two shivs on me, because I never like just shiv people. I have at least four shift doors can be open for me at all times. What is a shift door? Basically, it's just a lot of doors you, can, you have to open shift. when you have a shiv. Did you play Dead Space? Hmm? Did you play Dead Space? 
Do you it know how? One. Do you know how in Dead Space the the nodes which you use to upgrade your gear could also be used to open special doors? Yeah, yeah but, well, yeah, I get the mechanic. Stuff. But why would it only you can only open a door with a ship? It just doesn't. Lock That's it. the only thing you have to open with it. Open yeah. it with. Like, like you don't have pipes and you don't have cards and you don't have keys and you don't have lockpicks. Because the I'd, like games. See, I'd like to see a game where you can just take your, <laughs> where you have an option of taking your gun and shooting the lock. Actually, no, th- those doors like, actually don't have locks. Piece of stone, just those are like s- shut-in doors. Yeah. And actually, like Ellie. Well, how do you how do you use you, the shiv to open them? You like wedge it underneath or something? Yeah. Well, can you just use like any piece of metal that would be lying around really. the apocalypse? Why not? not really. Next game play conceits. The door's so you actually, have to give you know, up yeah. something you want. Video game design. You like it's, it's, from it's yeah. gamey. It's, it's, it's gamey, game Nick. But you know, it's a video it's game. It's not trying yeah. to be, you know, not a video game. There, yeah, there are there are mechanical there are mechanical and system issues with The Last of Us, and yeah. that is not one, and that is not one of them. Are you, are you, I'm telling you exactly right now that this game is absolutely trying to be not a video game. It's trying to be a cinematic story experience. And no. I can't, just and, and I, Dude, and I, I, I suggest you, would, you should play the game before you call it a yeah. cinematic experience. Oh, I will. Yeah. Did it, but I'll yeah, still complain about the shift door. No, this is the thing. <laughs> I, I do think that that game is too cinematic heavy. It, it, it is kind of weird like trying to make that point when you haven't actually played it, though. So Wait, I agree. And cinematic heavy? I think, it, or? I, I think it kind of... Because I've the, been playing the, for 10 hours and I've had four cutscenes over the course of the entire game. So I think... I'm not saying so it's if, you're com- if you're going to complain about cinematic, cinematic cameras and looks, I don't understand how that's a complaint. When exactly. we started, you know, when we started <laughs> through a set storyline, you know, like a cinematic style of storytelling, not a cinematic like, oh, it's only showing you visual All scenes. games follow set storylines. All games are linear. That's not true at all. Do you want it to be a There's, there's, there's like nothing like a non-linear game. That's complete nonsense. No, there's nothing like a non-linear game. It's the same yeah, thing we, like no, with people talking about emerging narrative tr- and immersion. Like these words, you don't use these words in the context you think they are supposed to be used. There's nothing like a non-linear what, game. What are you even talking about? A no, there's no. Oh my game. god! This, Google the definition of linear. Yeah, well, I mean, unless linear you count your journey as linear, what I'm telling you is there's a preset linear path that you're following. Yes, every game is linear because you don't move in multiple directions at once because of the laws of time and space. Ah. <sighs> I think he, I think what goes to say every narrative in every game is linear. And Why are you being so angry? Path. But it's it's video games. So you got to get angry. Video game. Yeah, I got to get. Well, mad. I don't think if any of us are angry. I'm just trying to discuss a topic, and uh, you know, being able to actually discuss something is not necessarily mean you're fucking mad about it. But I think that non non linear games, from the sense of what is the storyline, you can go this direction or that direction. Absolutely, do exist. Uh, uh, hey, here's the point. Bethesda the games in general. I to go this way. All, all I wanted to say about the cinematic nature of The Last of Us is when we started this conversation, there was a question posed of whether um, anything about this game is so inherent to games that it couldn't be done with a movie. And I didn't want to say because I knew that the consensus opinion was going to be against me, but I honest, the, there's actually a really good Eurogamer article that, um, that I got um, linked to, which um, I, I think it's called um, System vs. Stories or something, and it's, it sort of makes a lot of those points, but... I just don't think The Last of Us... I think for a game to be considered like a masterpiece, I think it has to really... It has to really do something that only games can do. Well, and I don't something think about anyone, the interactivity has to be important. I, I, and I, don't think yeah. I don't think anyone had said that this wouldn't, couldn't be a movie or a TV show, because it could. It totally could. I mean, it could. Story, I'm, kind of I think I'm just saying but, that the game... But, it's the same thing like the, with The Walking Dead. Like, that game impacts you in any way because you actually have to press a button to do shit. Yeah, that's that was yeah. the thing, though. Yeah, yeah that's the thing that, about video you know, games like, It's the, the same end, thing. Though. Like, this, the reason why, like, the scene where you bandage uh, Clementine's, Clementine's finger is actually because you actually have to press a button to, like, do every single reason. And yeah. that's why that scene is done like that. I mean, yeah, if, the, that, if it were that, a movie, that, if it were a movie, they would, like, for example, you would be sitting on a playground or just doing something else. This, this is a bad comparison because it's this little stuff like this that made me not love The Walking Dead. Which also, again, is like kind of missing the point. So That's kind of the reason why The Walking Dead is it so great. It seems like yeah, we're exactly. talking about two different schools of thought about what games should yeah, be in I, the first I, place. I think, we, I think we kind of are. Well, and what I, I think... video. Well, the thing is, what you're trying to say is like uh, a story should be wholly unique to the gameplay experience that only the gameplay can see could tell. But the problem is that every story has already been told and every story will be told like, t- time and time and time and time again. I end. think that's a load of crap. No, it I is because every game, every story. It doesn't mean you can't tell it well. 
Like, just because you're telling exactly. the West. But that's the thing. And once again, The Last of Us thing. tells it well. Yeah, well, I, I don't and the thing, I've never said anything. It doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. Last of Us being anything but probably amazing, right? From what I've seen, yeah. it looks incredible. It looks incredibly good storytelling. But, yeah. you know, the entire intro scene, which is all I've seen played the game, is the entire intro scene. And there is not a heavy focus on game mechanics. That's all I can tell you. But you're still well, doing it. That's the thing, though. Exactly. I mean, no, what, no, what no, you're no. asking for is the gameplay to be super no, coherent to the story. Anything. I'm saying I prefer, personally, to play a game that is extremely focused on mechanics. For example, Dark Souls the example. Sure, yeah, but not every game has to be that. No, no. Like, I'm exactly. tired of this. Because, because game, what you're I'm st- tired of people saying, oh, this isn't a game because I can't do this. What I'm saying is if you're trying to go for one or the other, there seems to be some holdovers from the other time. You know what I mean? Like, They're just... Naughty Dog for example, just wanted not to make it, another... Shoot no, are a holdover game. from game mechanics that I, don't, I do not feel is necessary in a game that's based so much around story and progression. Like yeah, I said, necessarily it's about a shivs in an unrealistic manner, just so that you can open. And, but there's also like stuff like you shouldn't uh, a, a metal pipe shouldn't break after hitting a guy. In the oh yeah, no, I agree. Time. I think that shouldn't be. Yeah, I think it shouldn't happen. Yeah, and and that is a mechanic in the game. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, think, I think, and what I'm saying is, these mechanics are at at odds with the overall philosophy of an experience that's telling a story like this, right? And I realize why they do it, right? I'm not a complete fucking idiot. Yeah. But the fact that you were be like, let's say you're holding on to shivs so you can open doors. Whereas you might use them to defend yourself. As soon as you are thinking, I need to hold another shiv to open a door, you are being taken out of this experience of this world where you're surviving against these zombies because you are thinking about opening a door with a shiv where easily in the real world you could use any number of things to open the door. Your hands, pieces of metal, different weapons. Like, no, about, well, I agree with you there. I, and that's, I think, that's yeah, but you're talking about game like game. technical <laughs> limitations and not to mention that it's kind of this... If, it, if that's but, what's taking you out of, out of the game, which, once again, I completely... like. I'm not talking about, about, talking about, talking about immersion is like the stupidest thing ever because it doesn't exist. But like, I just you know, I just think that you know, it's those are minor gripes because no, I agree. games I have to be based. Thing. I, I think think games are based on systems. But the, I think the point of those things really is to actually add to the story of making you feel like everything you have counts. Everything that you're carrying has exactly. some significant, whether it be protecting yourself from a clicker or opening a door. You know, like. But, but, the last thing I have to say about this is that I don't necessarily think that I have the the sort of the game design acumen to um, effectively make like the, like to to make the argument that would be necessary to um, I think get oh, just, what I'm saying. Just try it. Just try it. Like try. Uh, it. I know. Yeah, I yeah, talk in simple terms. terms. Like yeah. it's the easiest way yeah. to talk about art. You know. The, the easiest way that I can talk about it is just to describe it like as a feeling and just as I can't necessarily describe why I play The Last of Us and I'm thinking about systems and I'm thinking about it much more academically and not being absorbed in its world. And yet I'll play Skyrim and just be completely lost in the world for hundreds of hours as opposed to the 20 odd hours of The Last of Us. I can't always explain why, but there is there is something... There is something that holds me back from loving The Last well, of Us. Maybe it's because, as opposed to Skyrim or Oblivion, whereas you're the main character, you have all the dialogue choices, you make every single choice that that character makes, that The Last of Us, when it comes to storytelling and when it comes to where you're going, that game chooses it for you. I mean, I'm not yeah. going to argue that The Last of Us isn't a linear game, because it is. I mean, you're it following is. a set path. It, it's, it's going in a what... certain direction, you're going west, you know, and you're going to go yeah. through the same thing every time you go through it, whereas with Skyrim or Oblivion, you say, like, I want to go to this cave first. In fact, I don't even want to do the main quest. Okay, also, you know what? I, also, Skyrim you know what? is Skyrim uses like different systems because, uh, yeah. like Skyrim, I would yeah. argue, despite the fact that like it has more going on mechanically, is a bit less system heavy system because uh, system heavy game because you, all you'd have to do is you know like WSD mouse and that's all you need. That's all you need. I, just, escape I, part, I would highly disagree. There's so many systems going on in the background. There's social systems. There's NPCs. There's like faction systems, XP systems. Like, but that's all that but stuff, that stuff like you know happen. comes up more naturally. Like, it's it's easier to pick up. It's, it's worth mentioning that there might actually be a chemical um, thing and the way my brain is designed that I care more about the stories that I create as a, you know, and sort of I, that, I, that, I, that, I, emer- that emerge ambiently as opposed to something that's a construct that I'm supposed to empathize with and that is that I have Asperger's. Yeah, I was, I was going to say something like that but I didn't really want to offend you with it. No, it's fine. It that, was, that's, that's what fine. I was saying. I, I can see why you think like that. Yeah. I kind of think like that too. Like I like exploring these open worlds and kind of making my own stories. But yeah. like, sometimes I, just, I want these linear games. Sometimes, but I, I, I definitely I, love open yeah. world games for that reason. That that's I think that's really why I've had an issue um, articulating it because I've I don't know. 
just I I think I can I can that's that's what stops me from loving the intro and it's been so weird hearing everyone say what an amazing intro it is when it's it like, could, could have been a cutscene, right? It, it absolutely it, it absolutely could. But the reason but, but the reason it's so effective is because it's not a cutscene. Think that you're actually actively part of it. That's fine if you thought it was like super effective, but it just left me a little bit like Okay, I guess is I guess this is where we're going with this, as opposed to I suppose how everyone else seems to have thought, which is oh shit. Yeah, that I can yeah. I can understand. That was pretty much how I felt about Uncharted. I'd, I'm in the minority in that I don't really think the Uncharted games are anything special. Yeah. I think they, uh, the the Uncharted games are just fun because they're Indiana Jones. They're a good Indiana Jones game. Yeah. That is the only just, reason why anyone likes them because they don't care about the characters. Uh, no, I have they, a hard time saying that. They're Indiana Jones ripoffs, and they're what I said yeah. earlier about nothing in the game being integral to the story or the narrative. Or yeah, exactly. That's, and everything yeah, interesting to talk about those games is the set pieces and the characters know. and stuff. And those just, are they don't make a game mechanically. Well, a set piece is just a series of buttons you press, which you can say that a game is that, but it. And well, the thing about that sets that apart with, at least with Uncharted, is that, you know, when the train falls off the side of the cliff, you're actually the one climbing the train. You aren't pressing, press triangle to you, yeah. jump onto the next thing. You're, like, pushing up. To be up. honest, yeah, but... I mean, I know are. it's not, it's not you're... like, as intensive as it should be. I agree with you there, because it is very, like, Lester, and it's very, like, gu- guided. But at least to the point it's not, like, God of War, where I'm just pressing X to gouge out the Cyclops' eye over and over well, again. The, the God of War I actually have is that... some... They control God of War, Drake. In order, in order to get the you know the, the gouge out some dude's guy and I in God of War, you have to be good at the game itself to get to the point where you can go into the quick time event. Well, but no, but at the same time, if you're fighting a boss, you have to do that regardless if you want to beat him. I mean, well, that's yeah, the same thing. You have to do that. I could make that same argument to Uncharted. Like you have to be good enough to the game to get to the point where the train crashes out the cliff. You yeah, know, you have to be able to fight sucks. your way through it still. You game know. Part- Uncharted isn't all that great, which means that the, the oh no, part, I will totally agree with you on that. It up aren't. The, again, it's the thing that the reason why Uncharted two and uh, Uncharted three kind of sucked. The reason Uncharted two was awesome is because at the time that game came out, there was nothing really like that. You know, like there was nothing like super like cinematic and like as character heavy and as well acted as Uncharted was at the time it came out. I don't know. College and that's why it was so well liked. It's because like a lot of people enjoyed that. Like games are becoming like actor heavy. You know, like story is becoming super important. Where on arguably it was a big set piece game. You know, I think let's last... go back. Let's let's go talk about Call of Duty Four for a minute. The nuclear bomb part. That was the part of that game that makes the game part, you know, integral to it. They had you. They expected you. I mean, you were expected expecting to move on to the next level, shoot some more dudes instead, and then that nuke blew up, and, and then you're put explode. down. And you're thinking, "Well, where's the next part of the level?" And you're just moving forward, and it's this part of the game where the gameplay and the narrative come come in to make something really, really, really affecting. That part is not remembered for no reason. That part is remembered because players are actually in it. And they're actually controlling it and actually expecting to do something, but no, the game is reinforcing yeah. that. Oh, you then die. you also have the, dead. Then, <laughs> then you also have like no Russian, which is kind of the same thing, where it's I, I pretty much going to the player, yeah. hey, do something horrible. You have to do something horrible, and you really don't actually have to do anything. It's horrible, kind of a but, laughable scene, but yeah, that also reinforces what I mean by yeah. You know, and, oh, I, I agree. Your game can have important stuff parts. like that in Spec Ops: The Line, where the kind of the gameplay itself kind of services, you know, the end half of that game. Um, yeah, Uncharted but, had nothing like that. Uncharted was just a movie. <laughs> but that's why people. I don't like know, it. man. You know, in the end, I guess I'm one of the last people that really just loves Uncharted for what it was. But I don't no, know. I love. I, Uncharted I do too. think it's interesting how the, the internet has just kind of completely like shitted on that game for so long. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't play any of the Uncharted games. I still think Uncharted Two is just an absolute like masterclass game. Like, like it's that's a just well crafted amazing. game, well paced. The gameplay is serviceable. The characters fine. are funny. The characters like, are fun. yeah. Like, it's, it's, a co- it's a popcorn movie. It's not supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. It's yeah, but when people call it like a masterpiece of the generation, hey, you know what? It, it's yeah, kind hey, of hey, frustrating hey, because there's just uh, there's way there's games Weaver. that did way more this generation than Uncharted Two ever could have. I don't yeah. know. It kind of set the standard for like like these big. Oh, well, I don't. Stuff. I I think uh, Uncharted like kind set of set pieces. The tone and stuff. For but but can I just can I say that that's why we're having a conversation where I am just you know 
you know, breaking down and being, you know, seemingly hostile about a game that I think is fantastic. I mean, it's it's that sort of the fact that it gets put on this pedestal that makes me feel like I have to do, like, makes me, you know, compelled to do that in a way. Oh, it's no. Not, it's not I, I, I was ready to, uh, like, give some crap to Last of Us in a few minutes. I mean, I just wanted to defend what I liked about that game. Obviously, sure. you, you don't like the parts I like. I, I think I d- Ellie could be better written, I think. Oh, I don't know. I think she's pretty well written. Yeah, I, she's, she's okay, pretty, but I don't really have that great of a connection to her so far. Maybe you'll see. Huh. Yeah. Really, you'll see. Like, in the there, there are... They, uh, the controls are kind of swimmy, and when I say controls, uh, I, I, the sw- shooting I like being swimmy, but the camera itself is kind of like, like yeah. splashy. And it, if you've not been playing, because I have, to, I've been playing it like on and off, it, it's a little hard to get back into right away. Yeah, it's it's um, it's unique, but kind of in a bad way. Y- yeah, but then I also don't like the fact that uh, I'm with you. I don't enjoy that most of my encounters I have to end up killing a bunch of people, which I'm- kind of goes against the point of what I wanted in this game. But I still think it's fine because of the way they set up the character. They did it a little better than Booker and Bioshock. So, oh, yeah, he's yeah. a soldier. He killed a bunch of people. Whereas in yeah. this, they like, kind of set it up really well. Uh, this, uh, this, whole, this whole thing is such a bummer to me because, you know, I had to actually bring up Aspo- my Asperger's syndrome to, act- to, to, to actually find a way to articulate what doesn't connect with, me, with, with this um, game. Like, but when, the, we get, the, when we get to that point, like, what the fuck are we doing? What the fuck am I doing? I, I guess I could see that, but at the same time, I think it's an important argument to be had to get like a different viewpoint of games from a different like yes. mindset. I mean, people. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. like the same thing when people talk about sex and gender. It's like you can't just write it off because no one wants to talk about it. Like it does have an impact on the experience. Of yeah. Well, like it does. Uh, okay. But here's here's, so, the, here's here, the here. Uh, wait, hold on. Hey, hold on, Alice. I have really bad ADHD. In fact, that is what I, I've been kind of an asshole this entire time. Is that my medication? Is, I don't have a medication for a month, so yeah. it's really hard for me to just focus on this conversation. And that is why I'm looking up really cre- creepy lick of tongue pictures. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, I, I, I but have. But that's well. that's why I can't play things like uh, Dark Souls, because I would okay. be able to like slow down enough to actually comprehend that. Like that's like slow paced yeah. games. I can't handle. They they bother me. They freak me out, and I can't deal with them. I think I think the ADHD is why I I can't play games like action games for like four six hours at a time. Like I just. I, I just can't like, to, you know. I've actually found that my last of the sessions tend to go by fairly quickly, but I am so exhausted by three hours. Exactly, that's like, the same thing with me with games, you know. And it, it's a good idea to get like to let people know about that because that gives uh, people a different viewpoint on what you yeah, want. Yeah, I I kind of had it in the back of my mind that this was something that we should you know maybe bring up at some point. I mean, there was a while ago that Patrick did do an article, and here's the funny thing: I love L.A. Noir. Yeah, that like the fact that I'm yeah. have Asperger's and love Ellie Noir is kind of weird. It is uh, weird, but yeah, I don't know. It's I, just, I, yeah. I guess I I wasn't really intending to get into this right now, but it kind of it kind of just came to me. So, and, then, and I'm actually really glad that you brought that up because and it, it's not something that it, it makes it. No, it shouldn't it, be. You know, it shouldn't be at all. It's fine. I just yeah, yeah it's I just, fine. I just don't go out of my way to talk about it. I suppose, you, and you shouldn't have to. Yeah. But I, I, I do think, I mean, as long as you're comfortable with it, because like, I, I knew yes. that you, you had Asperger's, and I, I kind of thought that in the back of my head. That was one of the reasons why you weren't liking it. I just didn't want to bring it up because I thought you'd be offended. Nah, but, I have I have Asperger's syndrome. Ask yeah. me anything. We've already offended Jews, so you know. Yeah, we man. offended <laughs> Jews, fudge hogs. And fudge, whatever. But I, I think... Uh, did least, I really uh, say something that was offensive about the Jews? Like, no, it was me. Hicks did. Hicks did. I mean, I didn't actually. I was joking, but yeah, you know. Apparently. He's a fucking racist. <laughs> by and by races, I mean that he doesn't doesn't consider Jews to be a race. Except I they're don't. below that. <laughs> the list the list of offenses is really piling up for next. Yeah, we need to put yes, that. Oh, yeah. to put oh, I like Final Fantasy. What's next? Exactly. I know, right? We just God. we just need to put a Hitler mustache on that licky tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he changed I, it. Yeah, he did. I'm, I'm so glad he did. It. Because I finally worked out what I, is it find, that I find so disturbing about that image, and I, it's just the saliva, just the <laughs> running down her chin. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's actually a man. Actually, a guy, way. by the way. Yeah. Why <laughs> did you have to tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> How does that make it any different? Exactly. I don't know. Maybe the lick is female. What are you saying, man? Come on. The the saliva actually makes it hotter. Not like it matters. I'm still trying to work out miles per hour over here, so just leave. <laughs> I'm I'm not in the best place. 
<laughs> and, and, yeah, and yes, I'm going to keep bringing that up. Miles per hour. Tails per hour. You're saying that miles per hour made you a bit vulnerable? Perhaps. <laughs> we should have brought it up. What was that Sonic game they showed at E3? It looked pretty cool. Uh, the Sonic Lost World. Lost World or something? Yeah, that yeah. looks that looked pretty it interesting. Like that, it's not involved with dinosaurs or in any way whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, hey, you don't know. Did you guys play Sonic Generations? Nope. Yep. It's pretty good. I, I played. I think I played the demo. Uh, I don't. If there was a demo, I don't remember. I've good. seen some of it. There was. So a demo. Sonic's there kind of been a... downhill since like three. Did anybody? Did anybody play Sonic Rush? Sonic Rush yeah, was a really, really good Sonic game. Ah, they're okay. Anyone? Sonic no? Advance is better than Sonic Rush, but uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I disagree on that one. I don't know, man. Some, I mean, not all the advanced ones, obviously. I think, like, one is probably... Rush 2 is, like, not so, not so hot. Also, the boss. I didn't even play Rush. I just played Rush 1. It was the game I got with my 3DS, uh... And it was a whole lot of fun, and it's like people bring up, you know, where's the old 2D Sonics? And I'm saying there's Sonic Advance 1, 2, 3, and Rush 1 and 2 sitting out there. They're getting kind of old now, but, you know, there were Sonic games then. And people just don't seem to have played them. I don't know. Yeah. Well, people and there was a, don't there was a, play much, was a, playing a lot. And there was another 2D one for the PSP. I forgot the name of it. Really? Well, it was... It was it was a side scrolling it was like a racing game but it was a Sonic level so it, it fit pretty well. Huh. Uh, I think I another game you're rivals. talking about is like oh, yeah. Rivals. I yeah, rivals. no I never played that. <laughs> it's actually yeah, fun when Sonic. you're playing against other people. Oh, like Sonic R friend. No. Super American but soundtrack but only. Yeah. Anyway, I liked I liked Sonic Adventure too so I guess I don't have much room to complain about. I liked it too as well. One not so much. Big the cat kind of ruins it. Big the cat, cat makes it better. Big the cat kind of ruins everything. Let's, let's, let's. But I remember the ending of Sonic 2 was awesome. You were out there grinding rails in space and yeah, jumping right. around. Going turning into Hyper Shadow, <laughs> the fuck it was. It was crazy, but it was fun. Yeah. Uh, I remember the ending of Sonic Adventure 1 was alright too. Sonic Adventure hey guys, was very like dragon. Speaking of endings, obviously. guess what I finished for the second time? The podcast. Yes, Katawa Shoujo. Uh, I just want to report in that the ending Which of Mass Effect Three continues to be horrible, and it actually is kind of worse now. Oh, my ending of Mass Effect Three is totally fine. No, uh, no, it isn't. The ending is horrible. Let's talk about logical and story separation in Mass Effect Three. All right. Let's not talk about Mass Effect Three anymore. I, I just want to say that because I, I want to say that synthesis is the only right choice. No, Dude, I, God, I synthesis have, is the, the worst. worst choice. What do you guys, mean? guys, 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 everybody guys, agrees. Guys, 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 guys. guys no, guys. you're forcing everyone to agree. Yeah, so you're like the Nazis. Yeah, it's not true. The Nazis everyone the same. once again They're makes sense with Nix's characterization on this podcast yeah. today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Except Canadians like, are all Nazis. Honestly, the the way I end that game is I just do the story ending. And it's more of just a fuck you to the Reapers, or the context of whatever the hell the Reapers are. It's just like, no, you know fuck you. No, it's a fuck you to the Hold player. Yeah. The new ending, you can, like, you can shoot oh, yeah, the reject. kid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can shoot the kid. That's what I do all the time. Like, fuck you, kid. <laughs> Start <laughs> and doom the rest. I just want to play that logic to hope in FF13, so I don't have to I, deal I with also, it. I also play dubstep hours. every time I do it, just to further end the fuck you. Yep. But uh, I just want to say... I've never experienced anything that has such a sharp drop off like Mass Effect Three. You mean like you know from I mean? one to two? I just want to <laughs> like no, no, like at the ending, Agbar. like even the game itself, regardless of what complaints you have with it, by the end of the Thessia mission, and that it just plummets well, okay. in the quality. So I, I agree that the ending is kind of like lackluster, and but like, what the hell are they supposed to do? How do you think that game could kill the Reapers? You do the triangle thing that they're talking so about when they're coming out with the Walking Dead. No, I'm playing Halo. Have all of your choices add up into that uh, the end moment. Just have everything kind of face in. Like you know, you have the uh, what are the the Rachni show up, you know, and they have their ships, you know. Yeah. Everything you've done kind of plays in, but it always ends in the same result. I wasn't looking for a multi-choice ending. I was looking for the same ending. Yeah. Maybe it'd be a little different depending on what my Galactus readiness was. Maybe, maybe I synthesis ending we, results in a bunch of spores being released of modern day New York City. Past. You know, you know what, you know what disappointed, disappointed me the most about Mass Effect Three? There was no boss fight with Harbinger. 
There was no Harbinger. I wanted a boss fight with Harbinger. You had to fight, fight with Harbinger, Reaper, but it kind of sucked. Yeah, he just kind of shows up at the end, shoots a laser at you, and then flies away again. The end. Bye, like yeah. bad guy. What? Huh? Huh? What? Yeah. Sounds awesome. I liked. Har- I think Harbinger was an awesome villain too. Yeah, he was I really a good liked, villain. Yeah, um, that that DLC only Leviathan guy. He was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, Leviathan's Leviathan's all right, but again, it kind of adds into the really crappy universe setting that they decided to end that series on. So, yeah. Also, by the way, Leviathan has no play in the ending cutscene at all. Like they don't add like yeah, the playing. Okay. Yeah, right. I just, really she can mention it to the kid, but aside from that, there's nothing. I just love like how nothing, yeah. the implications of Leviathan are. F- <sighs> I just love it. It's, it's just a staple of bio writing. Like, yeah, let's just leave a race of the race that you know is Great. the reason for all this mess yeah. just running around. Because who the fuck cares? You know what really bothers me the most of all about Mass Effect Three, though. Mm-hmm. Is Dragon Age Origins is the exact goddamn story as uh, Mass Effect Three. Yeah, you played Halo. Same story. No, but when I, when I even that what I'm saying is like well, there is an yeah. <laughs> evil that is awoken that is destroying yeah, 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 the, yeah. the planet or whatever, and then you have to rally all the uh, races together to get <laughs> defeated. Yeah, right? except Dragon Age Origins says the best possible ending for that thing, which is just it does have a, it has a fantastic ending. Of- just I have not finished Dragon, Dragon, Dragon Age Origins. Man. It'll be just as bad. But you know, like, <laughs> like I'm just I'm just gonna say Akbar. Like the thing is that. Dragon Age Origins, ha- Dragon Age in overall has different themes. Yeah, like, you know, but like I mean, the theme of Mass Effect is you know like you can always pull through with enough preparation and one man can make a difference. Well, you know, and, Dragon Age you know, is all know. about you can do good, but you just never have enough context. Like finish, yeah. finishing a game is again like the golden ending is like almost impossible on your first try. I saw the game do that where you're not the fucking chosen one and someone else is. <laughs> <laughs> like, wouldn't it be cool to play Dragon Age? Except, like, your party's always like the second one to get there, and like the real heroes already solved the problem. Like, that'd be fucking weird, right? Dragon Age is kind of. You show up to the Dragon town, and it's already cleaned up, and you're like, oh, I guess, I guess. So. Well, how about, about Dragon Age? How about a game? Really a how about a game? Dragon Age, <laughs> Dragon Age Two actually kind of does it because it's kind of a deconstruction of the whole concept of the chosen one. Like how about Hog, a, yeah. like, you know, Hog is not Hog is not the chosen one. Like, yeah, but you're still like thinks- a living legend. Everyone thinks he is, and but and still everyone have to play Dragon Age too. So. Everyone thinks that Hawk is like a tr- the chosen one, but like it turns out that no, he's he's just a dude or a girl who just got caught yeah, up in some circumstances, and wow, well, like, yeah, it kind of it kind of happens. And okay, how I just want to say, in oh sorry, go. On. I was gonna say, how about a game or story where you're in the you're like the the lancer to the chosen one or whoever, and the chosen one just completely screws up. Real legend. Uh, just kind of goes down into a spirals down into a really bad spot. That's kind of the and kind of subverts it. Two. Diablo two and brutal legend. Yeah, torchlight Br- two kind of. Brutal legend is about you. The whole thing. Brutal legend is about you playing. You know, the, the actual like lancer. Yeah. The, the, the second guy. Uh, but I think, in the defense of Mass Effect, I never thought of Shepard as the chosen one. Yeah, that kind of. I, mean, I don't get why that's where that's all coming from. I, I don't get why that's too. Yeah. Well, I mean, we it need paint, to bring up, We need to way, bring but... Shepard back from the dead. Well, I, I mean, I get that, but at the same time, it was always like he just is the guy that can get shit done. It's not that he was like predetermined by any sort of like oh, yeah, uh, yeah, destiny yeah, yeah. or prophecy. He just he was the best at it, and it's, it's so, not you know. Like, well, but I mean, what I'm saying, it's not. He's like not a chosen one. He's not predetermined to complete this great task or anything like that. Oh he yeah, but did. but he you know he's he, he's still like a different sort of protagonist than Dragon than you know, like the Great oh, yeah. Lord well, and, I, I mean, the I'm Hawk. Not, like, I'm not saying know, that he's... you know he he like you said he's really good at doing this stuff or she yeah and but you know like the Grey Warden just kind just is just just kind of all they got at this point like Hog is you know just stumbles in yeah which is you know why why I was annoyed by. Because, you know, Mass Effect 3's ending would make much more sense if it was the ending of a Dragon Age game. Because it's it's coherent with the themes of that series. Why the ending of Mass Effect 3 is not coherent with the themes of the series at all. Yeah. But yeah. Atlas. Yeah? Are you stoked for Hotline Miami 2? No. Why? <laughs> because I didn't play Hotline Miami. Why? And because... 
I don't know. Didn't look too interesting. The the sound. I, I thought the soundtrack was pretty dull. It's okay. It's a pretty good soundtrack. I, and no, I actually still kind of like that music. I don't know. It's like people love right. that soundtrack. I'm, I'm, I'm still I'm still bitter that it beat Journey in best music category. Uh, I will. How did something that. beat Journey in best music? Where well, did something beat Journey? Just, just wait, Giant Gi- Bomb. Just yeah, ask yeah. Giant Bomb. Yeah. I forgot. I didn't really remember that. Uh, that's mean, insane. To be, on, to be honest, they were upfront about it. Jeff was basically like, I don't fucking care about no classical music, which is fine. But I don't know. At the I'm same not, time, not actually, also, it's not classical music. It's orchestral classical yeah, music. Yeah, it's not yeah. classical. Like, <laughs> more, I'm I not wish saying that Jeff has well, the best classical. soundtrack ever. So that's fine. I'm not saying that Jeff was right. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just clearing <laughs> the air so people Shatter know the best the soundtrack of Hotline Miami. Whatever. Let's be honest. Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami is the best game of last year and deserves all the accolades. I mean, Nier has a better soundtrack than Hotline Miami. And you think I'm crazy? I had to Sleeping stick with Dogs was the best, best game of game last year. No, it's, it's Hotline Miami. What was last year? 2012? Was... What came out in 2012? Journey, Mass Effect 3, Crusader, X-Con. Crusader Kings 2, Crusader. Crusader Kings, Kings 2, Crusader 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 Kings 2, I guess I'd probably have to go with uh, Journey. I'm gonna go with Journey. Yeah, Journey was pretty good. Forza Horizon also came out. Yeah, but that's not like a pretty good in the running. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't love. I'm a huge uh, Forza fan. I didn't love Horizon as much as I would have. It was. I I, you see, I'm not a. I'm not a gearhead. I'm like, give me the car and let me drive. I don't care what's in it as long as it goes fast and handles well. So I just gotta go like, fast. I smile like Forza Horizon better than, yeah. you know, Forza Two and stuff. Uh, Forza Three for me is the high watermark of that series. I have played Forza. I've played. So, I've played some Forza too. I mean, I can. I can go through. Yeah, Forza Two is a customized great game. The engine and stuff. But guys, binary domain game of 2012. Just saying. Eh, binary name's alright. Eh, it's fine. It's pretty good. It I is. Did enjoy the way it's, it's it's it just blew up. This is the game by like people who say like, yeah, it's okay, or like, yes, it's awesome. No, I it is game. awesome. Really, I think I like it. it's awesome. It's better. It's, it's better than Mass Effect Three. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. I, did, I, I kind of played it after everyone was like, oh, like, oh this is awesome. And I was like, it's all right. It's, it's good. It's surprisingly good, I would say. It is surprisingly no, I good. Agree with you know, you know, okay, so my, here's my honest game of the year last year it, with one caveat. If the controls were done well, Kid Icarus Uprising would have been yes. an absolutely amazing game. However, what? it does not yep. get any qualifications because that control scheme is shit. I wish they'd port it to the Wii. Like, not you don't have to I make new textures anything, and up it. I just want to let you play it properly, like, or with like real fucking useful controls. Like, it is what game? Just Kid Icarus Uprising. Oh, like it's such a good game. It's it is so, so hard good. It is so good. It's so hard to play. Oh, I I've never had a game I like so much that I couldn't like physically play. It's like except for Runner <laughs> Two, because I get sick. My, my but like. My- can, my favorite thing about Kid Icarus Uprising is the video where Ryan Davis is talking about um, Wake Up Club, and he's got his iPhone on the Kid Icarus oh, yeah. stand. <laughs> actually, that I is my favorite. My phone on the stand because there's a little like uh, groove that the wire from my Nexus Four goes down through perfectly. It's great. There is a disp- there is a surprising lack of XCOM in this games of 2012. I said XCOM. XCOM's a great game, but it's also like. Kind of broken. It is kind of weird, like kind of. It's like broken. the same reason I wouldn't give like any Bethesda game ever a game of the year because they're so. Cool. I really like, like that. Dude, you're crazy. Like you're crazy. I would give. Crazy. I would give Skyrim. Well, Skyrim was 2011's game of the year. <laughs> Let's just give Skyrim. Old, yeah. Is Dark Souls came out? Yeah. Dude. Uh, okay. You know no. what? I've only played a few hours of Dark Souls. Oh, so I guess Dust I can't think tale. It all, but I doubt. Game. I doubt. You know what? My thing is, I haven't had many issues with Bethesda games. I had a handful of crashes in Fallout New Vegas. Other than that, I just... I, these bugs that people complain about, I don't see them. They don't happen to me. Some of the bugs are fun. I got... I got yeah, okay, ten, flying when you get hit by a troll. I mean, a giant. I've got 10 frame rate in Skyrim, and I have a fucking NVIDIA Titan. Yeah, the yeah. Flame rate, frame rate is really terrible. Excuse? What is the excuse? I, play, I also played it on 360. Uh, so I didn't have not three. <laughs> so I didn't have like frame rate. It was guys missed Pandaria, obviously game of the year. <laughs> oh duh. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, guys. Same Bastion gonna do it. is the game of the year. Guys, guys we're gonna do it this way. Yeah, Bastion's game of the year every year. I think it's fucking awesome. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Game. If you like dumb games. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a dummy. <laughs> okay. you're stupid. I'm gonna say one thing, and we're gonna end this podcast, okay? 
I'm gonna open okay. the shoe door on this fucking podcast. I was gonna say, okay, the one thing is, Fallout 3 sucks ass. Thank <laughs> and you. Were listening to the, you were listening to the Giant Bomb Community Podcast episode 13, or maybe 12, or maybe episode 12 and a half. 12 beta. 12B. We're not ready to talk about it yet. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to have to have a Fallout 3 conversation at some point. But, not now. I really, I just want to say Mothership Zeta was awesome. Chrono Trigger is great. The, the DLC was okay. much better. Time Shift was great. DLC was okay. The DLC was okay. okay. The point okay. Like, Smash TV was pretty good. You know what makes Smash TV better awesome. game, gameplay it that is. was janky as hell? Oh, you know, that's end. Play. Then let's or we everyone play Splunky. Let's we'll go play Splunky. Also, excellent. Yeah, right, Splunky is a good game. Too bad it came out like six years ago on PC. Well, Splunky is just way better. You know, it all just came out like five years ago. And so can be best be the best game ever. Oblivion. Viva Pinata. Oblivion came out more than five years ago. I, yeah, you just got, this, you disgust paradise. me. Trouble in Paradise is... I was joined by Atlas. <laughs> yeah. Is he going to say anything? No. It's like on. Fallen out. I'm not say- He's dead. I'm not, say- okay. I'm not saying anything until you take it back about Fallout 3. I have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm so I, was, I was joined by uh, Atlas, who is not going to be... Who is not going to be heard for the rest of the podcast, ever. Uh, well, <laughs> I was joined by Nick's Iron. I like Final Fantasy 13. I'm terrible. You are. No, you're not. Fat back. Fudge hogs. Akbar. He took my view of Pinata joke, that asshole. Fuck you. <laughs> and Believer. Too I also like Final Fantasy 13. And Fallout 3 is a pretty good game, too. <sighs> no love for Viva Pinata, though. Alright, let's end this. See y'all later. Bye. Bye. I love you. What hats name Miku Project Diva F? Oh. <laughs> Alright. That's a good way to yeah, end. It's a good game. I have a mod on Left 4 Dead 2 that turns all the witches into hot oh, and And give me that link. Can I turn all the players into hot as well? Uh, I think you turn all the zombies into hot